loves Joy Sparkle BS. Oh, so much drama. Um. <laughs> Joy Sparkle BS. I mean, you responded to Joy Sparkle, so she's kind of a psychopath. Like, why her? You guys will know that I have been having conversations with Joy Sparkle. Races of brown people were about people's butt and getting poo in their and in their wiener holes. So whatever. Although Joy Sparkle is kind of crazy. Look. It Oh, burn! Did you hear that? Hi, welcome back to the part two of the Joy Sparkle BS experience. I had a lot of responses to the part one so far. Some positive and some negative. But either way, I know you are all waiting for the conclusion of the messy story involving Joy in the 2017 drama. I'd like to add in that if I get anything wrong in any of these parts, I will make sure to make a follow-up with said corrections. Come and join me on this journey. Make sure to watch the part one, but in case you don't care to watch, I'll give you a brief summary. We last left Joy on May 23rd, 2017, five months into the hectic year for our main character. Last time we left her, she was nonstop in drama and lashing out at anyone mildly criticizing her. She had a falling out with Chambers of the Heart, Nick Monroe, and based Mama, and was currently on the constant defense. Her relationship with the biological mom from Daddy of Five, Rose Hall, was on the rocks. And she had a meltdown at a Ford dealership. But she still had a strong fan base last we left her. Joy is extremely charismatic. In this part, we will conclude the 2017 Joy arc. So let's go. And remember, don't bother or harass anyone involved in the story. This is just for educational and entertainment purposes. So on to the story. We are on May 23rd, 2017. And on this day, Joy went at Nick Monroe again, writing, You are again making up stories to cover your ass. It won't work this time. Shut up and focus on the kids. Oh, that's right. You stopped caring. You made up horrible lies about me and others. And now you are concerned because you know you will be called out. Nick Vaughn, you are a sniveling, cowardly pussy that makes tweets and blocks me. Be a man. Face me and the bullshit you spoke about me and others. You guys are truly awful people with no intention to help protect children. Keep talking about the case. I shut up because I care about them. But keep talking shit on Twitter, having me blocked, not researching any info on mem, and call yourself a journalist. Bring it, puss. Worski then went live later that day to discuss Joy, where he says he likes Joy, but he did lightly criticize her. This would not be okay. On the 24th, Rose, Chambers, and Based Mama made an appearance on a stream. The stream consisted of Based Mama talking about her views on Joy. It's just Joy Sparkle drama all the f***ing time. Like, it's DMs constantly. I'm tired of this bitch. I'm tired of her f***ing I'm tired of her. Okay. Also, Chambers popped in and added that she had requested Joy to stop making so many videos. I can look really bad on me, I can look really bad on Rose, and I mean the GoFundMe has stalled because of this freaking drama. Rose also concluded in the stream that she wanted everyone to stop fighting. You should have, everybody should not fight like we're still in high school. <laughs> that was, that's what it makes me feel like. Everybody's like bickering and fighting over something stupid that... This seems like a soft opinion to everyone, right? Well, let's keep going. Again, things are getting a little slower in the drama. Joy seemed to be winding down. Martin Lewis posted a video about the drama between her and Constigo on the 25th, and sometime around the 26th, Joy allegedly broke down and started crying on a stream, but it wasn't archived. But then, Nick Monroe wrote a huge article on his blog about the fight between Joy, based mama, him, and Chambers. Nick Monroe would eventually delete this article after Joy began to claim the information was lies, but the Wayback Machine still has a copy. And to be honest, nothing seemed too much of a blatant lie from everything I've read from other sources. Joy will always say people are lying and never really back it up. And from what I understand, Nick Monroe probably just wanted to stop being bothered by her. I'm not sure. In the article, we learned that on May 7th, Tim Conlon had emailed all the people involved and how their drama was causing rumors and hurting Rose's case. In the article, Nick writes that Chambers blames herself for the blowout with Joy, but also Rose had contacted Chambers and said that she was unhappy with Joy's videos being posted, the ones that got views using the abuse of her children. Then the article detailed how stress 
arrest this all made Chambers, who just wanted to help in the situation and was caught between everyone fighting. Tim and Rose were concerned over Joy spamming out videos because she wanted to help and because Chambers tried to separate herself from the drama. Joy ended up going on streams and calling Chambers a snake. I talked about this earlier. Here is a direct quote from one of Joy's streams from her manic stream from May 20th that I got from the article. The quote is, I have all the evidence I need to burn every one of these mother and I've just been sitting. And let me tell you why, because unlike everybody else, I give a sh about Tim, Rose, and the kids. I sure do. That's why I kept quiet. But I'm going to continue to be quiet. But real quick, let, let's talk about some snakes. You're not my friend. You never were my friend. You just wanted the benefit of me and my channel. So I had a really long conversation with somebody recently who claimed to be sorry, made a fake ass apology video fake and then you know what here's the thing guys let me explain something when we had our chat i said with all the lies i was told there is a witch hunt it was manufactured by us because we wanted to make you look crazy and i already knew so we were going to do everything we could to make you look crazy and discredit you you guys don't believe me guess who has the recording of it guess who recorded it i don't trust mother anymore so here's where this is at and this is where i'm so irritated don't trust a mother snake i'm going to be way more careful she didn't do anything wrong all right i i can't wait to pull up my list the list of receipts i can't wait so if somebody didn't do anything wrong why are they going to turn around and be rude to me here's the thing we talked about it and i said the hit that my reputation has taken because you and that group decided to do all that. Oh, you guys have no idea the damage they did. The damage that they did in this situation. And I'm keeping it quiet. I'm keeping it quiet. But let me just talk real quick for a second because this sh is just too infuriating. I said, you need to apologize and try to repair this when the time is right. Pearson agreed. I said you needed to do it when the time is right. The person agreed. You know what, uh, you know what else I said? I said, wait until everything is over. Wait until the trial is over. Wait until everything is over because it's not about me and you. It's not. Look, it'd be nice to have y'all clear my name with everything you did, but I don't give a shit. It's about Rose, Tim, and those kids. That's been my focus, even when you guys went against his advice of legal counsel. That's my focus, and I said, remember, let's all be mature. This is about them. Next day, I get a text. Hey, so the others are going to apologize. They're standing by what they said. They said they're just going to walk away, and I'm going to go ahead and do the video. I said, don't, don't. You're going to bring shit up again. Don't, don't, don't. Let's be mature. Remember, it's about the kids, but for them, it's not. It's not. It never has been. The article then shows all the conversations between Joy and Chambers, where the two talk about the BBC interview, and everything between the two seemed fine. But then, Joy started to tell Chambers that people, such as Base Mama, were bashing her in videos. And when Chambers didn't get dramatic over this news, Joy then starts talking about Nick Monroe targeting her. She then tells Chambers to distance herself from her for her own good, and Chambers complies, as mentioned earlier. Chambers doesn't separate yet, but she does later on, and she tells Joy that her spamming of videos was causing people to email the lawyer and cause issues. After all this, and Joy maintaining that she was going to keep posting videos on info that she was getting from a private inside source, Chambers and Rose decided to separate from Joy, and Chambers informed Joy. Joy seemed to really understand at first, but then, like a day later, Joy starts flipping out in the DMs on Nick Monroe, who tweeted out information on the case. She was earlier talking about having secret information, but was flipping out because Nick Monroe put out public info to anyone who had an internet connection. Chambers doesn't respond. And Joy eventually, on the 20th, claims that Chambers caused Joy to be witch hunted. And that's when she does her Everyone's a Snake stream. Like, I thought this was all about helping abused kids, but it really seems like the Joy show. Joy was convinced that everyone was jealous of her, and they had decided to paint her as insane, to ruin her career and ruin the case for Rose. After the drop of this article, Joy went live and cried on stream, allegedly. She also claimed that diarrhea made her gain weight. Oh, and all her copper toxicity was gone now. This is all according to a post I saw 
saw in Lokau from around this time. Meanwhile, the Daddy of Five Facebook group began to try to report Joy's videos for slander to get her kicked off of YouTube. Joy took to Twitter later on to tell Nick that he was hurting the case for Rose, and she was only defending herself, to which Nick shot her down and said that this is not what Tim and Rose had told him. Again, I thought this was all about saving some kids, but egos were running high with everyone. After some back and forth, Joy posted a twit longer to Nick called Nick Mon, last response. In the post, Joy acted completely innocent and claimed Nick is being a liar, slanderer, and manipulator, and claimed that Chambers was trying to dox her roommate. It just gets messy from here. Everyone is fighting on what information was okay to put out there on the case, and it's all just scummy. And Joy, after the fight, announced that she was going to make a video exposing everyone. Issues with Rose then arise. Apparently in livestream chats, Rose was saying that Joy had issues and was only in it for attention, versus Nick, based in Chambers, who were just there to help. This did seem a bit odd, because of what Rose had said in emails behind the scenes. But to be fair, she was in a legal battle for her abused children, and Joy was moving 300 miles per hour and posting about things nonstop. It's hard for anyone to keep up. After this, Joy tweeted out that she didn't want anyone to attack Rose. We are now on the 27th of May. On or around this day, Repsion stepped in once again, this time in the comment section, trying to rein Joy in on her insanity, writing, the pettiness of this drama makes people miserable and insufferable. This is what YouTube has become. Word of advice, learn to ignore shit. You don't need to take the defense or attempt to refute everything that is thrown at you. You'll contribute to creating mental health issues with yourself by continuing to make videos about everything involving drama. Joy would ignore this advice. Joy went live again, this time on YouTube, to start a fight with her friend Angel, allegedly. And then in the stream, she also just went back to her normal bubbly fake self and pretended that all the drama circling her wasn't bothering her, allegedly. Again, this is all according to lockout posts. Let's see what else that happens in the stream. According to posts, of course. She criticized Andy in the stream, criticized some guy 827, AKA Stevie Wolf, and then made the claim that Takedown Man told her that the owner of You Now was a this is ridiculous. Fun fact, the owner of You Now made a documentary on Nambla that was not pro Nambla. It's one of the scariest documentaries I've ever seen. Takedown Man obviously didn't watch it. Also apparently enjoys a video about Andy. She put the tags Andy Worski Gay in there for marketing, of course. Joy's false tags got Repsion to respond once more. I'm bringing up Repsion a lot in this video because Repsion is the biggest person in the Onision YouTube sphere. And not only that, he helped Joy get her platform by featuring her. So it's almost like he's Joy's senpai. Anyways, he responded writing, False tags can get you suspended slash flagged on YouTube. Tags do matter if you tag them falsely. Not only that, Still Grey, aka Ian Miles Chong, some guy who everyone dislikes, called out Joy's false tagging as well, to which Joy called him Still Gay. Hmm. Joy didn't post or go live the next day, the 28th, and just fought with Nick Monroe on Twitter some more. And then the next day, on the 29th of May, Joy announced that she was going to address the rumors about her again. But before that, Joy started to spam Nick Monroe's email inbox again, saying that every time he writes, she's going to email him. Nick didn't back down from Joy and started to post screen caps of her Skype conversation. And then came in Geek Thulu. I cannot stand Geek Thulu. Geek Thulu began to simp for Joy in replies to Nick Monroe. The conversation between Chambers and Based continued in the background, where they talked about Joy ruining her own reputation, yet blaming Chambers for the ruination. Apparently, Rose had asked Chambers and Based to stop arguing with Joy and her fans, according to these DMs. After this, Joy announced that she was going to make a video after her long break of like two or three days of not making a video. She had made 17 videos in the past two weeks though. Joy then tweeted out, I'm done, mother will apologize. Tonight live or I'm canceling for good. You don't with my YouTube friends. Stream in two minutes. I don't know what happened on this live stream. I think it somehow involved irate bear slash irate Alex, tipster gaming, and Geek Thulu. Though I don't blame any of those guys for being involved with Joy, except for Geek Thulu. Joy is crazy, but if you're doing other things, it's hard to follow how crazy she is. So anyone who got involved with her prior to later on, I don't blame them. Except of course Geek Thulu that guy. Joy soon announced that she was going to do a live stream with someone called OmniPolitics later on, but then started to fight with them because they said something mean about Suit Yourself and demanded that they apologize before debating. OmniPolitics is an alleged file who allegedly killed himself. Seems like that problem resolved itself. But anyways, moving on in the timeline. Joy posted a video responding to the popular internet troll, Copper Cab. You may remember this guy from his Gingers Have Souls video. 
Teachers have souls. I go to church. I'm a Christian. You don't know me. You're not God. <gasps> Copper Cab is a performance artist and a genius. And sometime around this time, Copper Cab began to identify as trans. I, uh... I haven't made a video in five months because I've been going through HRT because I'm transgender. Joy took this obvious performance art as serious and made a reaction video to it, calling Copper Cab fake trans. And we are in June. Another enemy of Joy's comes out. She has so many people she fights with. The Vegan Cheetah. The Vegan Cheetah was a drama YouTuber who has a lot of drama of his own, like everyone else in the story. There are no winners here. Apparently, according to LawCow, the Vegan Cheetah called Joy's viewers re so she got really upset about this and responded. June 2nd, Joy continues to stream fight with Vegan Cheetah. Very cool. And Joy started making videos on the Vegan Cheetah, and the Vegan Cheetah started live reacting to the videos. Day passes. Joy does a birthday stream around the 4th and does another SJW response video about a BuzzFeed video around this time. And my god, I remember this BuzzFeed video. So I'm going to tell you about it from my own memory. It was on a BuzzFeed video from around the time about like 4chan posters being incels or something like that. It was a bad BuzzFeed video and anti-SJW YouTubers did reaction videos to it. Joy did one too, but she completely missed the mark. I was still mildly a fan of her at this time, and I remember being just embarrassed for her. Instead of laughing at SJW cringe, she responded in this, I can just describe it as she acted like a boomer who didn't understand internet culture in any way. A day after, Copper Cap responded to Joy on a stream with Bering. And you do their little response that they do, you know, and they're just gonna make fun of me. But, or you know, they might ignore it. They might ignore this video and act like it didn't happen. And that's fine. But it did happen, and it's still happening, and by that I mean the degrading of your community. And it's going to keep happening as long as you let channels like Bering inspire the community until it starts creating channels like, oh I don't know, Joy Sparkles. Look at her, look what she's doing. I want all of you in the skeptic, skeptic community t -t 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 today, Junior! Get it out! Get it out! You know what I mean? You know, you know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right, skipping ahead a bit. On the 6th of June, Joy did a live stream with a title stating that she was thinking about quitting. And then the next day, she went on multiple live streams, one with Geek Thulu and one with Copper Cab. Meanwhile, tweeting that she was not going to stream on that day. Nick Monroe put out his official response to Joy Sparkle and her insanity on the 7th titled, My Response to Joy Sparkle BS. This article was a huge expose, including everything we knew about Joy so far. This would not be the last response Nick Monroe would post about Joy. It would detail all the convoluted drama Joy was involved in in the Daddy of Five case that we have discussed so far. It closed with Nick Monroe warning any readers of getting involved with Joy Sparkle BS. Martin Lewis made another video on her on the 8th about her roommate. Whatever, moving along. Joy at some point put up a video saying that she was too sick to do videos and then did a few live streams and this was all around the 8th of June as well. The video about her being too sick to put up videos was called Why I've Been MIA, but she was not MIA. She had posted a video the day before and posted two videos on the same day of the video. Joy really will act like she can manifest a reality just from her words. On the 10th, Joy does a surprise live stream early on in the day. In the stream, she says her full name, Katie Marie Smith, which later on, she will get mad at people for using her real name. But in this stream, according to LolCow, she mostly just throws herself a pity party. After the stream, Joy tweeted in the afternoon that she didn't care anymore and essentially the kid gloves were off. She was done with all the YouTube drama and was going to post a video on it later. She uploaded the video and according to the gossip boards, it was just her repeating the same stuff and talking about how she wanted to make friends on YouTube, but she was now done with all the clickiness and the drama. The video was titled, Hypocrisy of YouTubers and Manufactured Drama and Slander. I'm done. You know, guys, when I came on YouTube, um, and I've said this before, and I know people are gonna roll their eyes and think it's fake humility. I honestly had no idea. Within about six months, I have 55,000 people watching me between two channels. Had no clue. I had no clue that this was gonna happen. Um, but I've been learning a lot. And when I came on, guys, I came on this really naive. I came on wanting to make friends. I came on just genuinely wanting to share how I feel. You know, if the channel did well, great. But I had, you know, I'd done marketing before, but I hadn't done 
YouTube. I did it a long time ago, like in 2006, and then stopped. And, and you know, I don't think that, that's a long, long time ago. But um, I didn't know anything about how it worked. I just kind of jumped into it. And I'm more and more increasingly done when it comes to a lot of stuff regarding YouTube. Um, I'm done with the bullshit and the hypocrisy from people. And it's so fucking stifling. It, it's to the point where I, I've gotten to where I don't enjoy making videos a lot of days. These people who have done these awful things to me, I have rarely spoken up for myself. I've only done one video on YouTube. Not even talking about it, but highlighting that this person tried to ruin another relationship and got caught and called out. Apparently this conversation from the 7th is what triggered Joy to make the video. And it was based Mama and Monday Matt warning a smaller YouTuber, Tyler Preston, from working with Joy. In her video, Joy said that she was helping behind the scenes with Rose and her kids. And this was confirmed by Rose herself in the comments on the hypocrisy video. In a pinned comment, Rose Hall thanked Joy for helping pay for her hotel room. She also said that Joy didn't break the gag order. This is all strange considering Rose in private said that she was uncomfortable with Joy. But again, Joy did put the mother in an uncomfortable situation. I'm not on anyone's side here. The whole situation should have been about getting the kids to a proper home, but it became a big ego trip for Joy and even for based mama. After this, Joy live streamed again on YouTube. The next day, Joy posted another Daddy of Five update. Except like her other updates, there was no actual new information here, and it was just Joy complaining that she didn't do anything wrong. One small update though, according to the video, the kids were not with Rose at this time, but in CPS custody, at least according to Joy. Joy had scheduled a charity stream for this day, but she ended up canceling it because she was sick. This got people critical of her to raise an eyebrow. She streams every day, but the time it was for charity, it's canceled. Not only that, the YouTuber Negs offered to step in to help with the stream, and she refused the help. Behind the scenes, there was a chat between Chambers and Rose Hall about her in the hotel room. This conversation was leaked by Joy in her Google Drive to expose Rose. In the conversation, Chambers is upset that Rose let Joy know her location and advised Rose to instead get Joy to send the money to her lawyer to protect her privacy. Also in the conversation, Chambers threatens to not support Rose anymore if she isn't open about what was going on. She also pointed out how sketchy it was that Tim Conlin, the lawyer, kept contact with Joy. Rose Rose just kept giving Chambers the breakdown of where the GoFundMe money was going. It was all just messy. And now we are on the 12th of June, and Joy uploaded another video on the Daddy of Five case. Here is a summary of the video by a Kiwi Farmer. Since the video is no longer available, they write, new 15 minute long video on Daddy of Five. Apparently Rose didn't even know she was talking to the lawyer. In hindsight, there's something odd about the situation with the lawyer. Why is he talking to these random ass YouTubers about his client's case? Maybe Joy is looking for a new daddy. Quote, Honestly, Rose doesn't give me details. Every time we talk, I say do not give me details. Unquote. Translation, Rose doesn't tell me sh because she caught onto the fact that I can't keep my fat mouth shut. She then hints of knowing super secret court details, in spite of the fact that she just said she doesn't know sh Haha. <laughs> also on this day, Joy goes on Copper Cab stream. Then, later on in the day, someone who will become important later on appears to converse with Joy Sparkle BS, the multi-million sub YouTuber Trisha Paytas. On this day, Trisha shows support for Joy. Joy continued to fight with Base Mama on this day as well, apparently talking about her in a video and then unblocking her on Twitter to snap at her about Rose. Joy, for the next two days, backs off a little. She made videos on Onision and made a video about a wasp nest on the 14th. And also, Onision tweeted out something vague about calling the police about a stalker, which people thought was Joy. Rose was exasperated by all the drama and tweeted out on that day, Please stop attacking me. I need to worry about my babies. Not people trying to get me in trouble for rumors. Let the three of us heal. Then on the 15th, Joy was supposed to do another charity stream and cancels it again. She did, however, post another Daddy of Five video on this day, where she claims to have the court papers from the case. Yeah. After this, Rose Hall made her Twitter private. Meanwhile, Joy was claiming that she donated $1,200 plus to Rose, though the only evidence I could find was the $600 donation mentioned earlier. Meanwhile, it turned out Rose was not telling the full truth, though it was to protect her and her kids, because on this day, there was a chat log that Joy would leak later on in the timeline into her Google Drive. Remember the one I told you about earlier? The one that she put together to prove that Rose, the mother of these two kids, was an evil scam artist? And in this conversation, Rose said that she actually had custody of her kids. And 
and said that she said she didn't because she was trying to protect her children. After this, on June 16th, it was announced Rose had full control over her GoFundMe, which was previously in the charge of Chambers. This should be good, right? If people want to donate, they can. If they don't, they don't have to. Well, this would still be surrounded by drama, as based mama, Joy, Chambers, and Nick Monroe continued to fight. It really felt like these guys, especially Joy, wanted to micromanage this woman trying to get her kids back. Joy took to Twitter on this day to claim that she was being harassed. And then she did a live stream on a new obsession, the YouTube predator, Austin Jones. The next day, she posted two new videos on Austin Jones. Joy really gave no f about the criticism that she was milking the abuse of children for views. Not only that, Joy put out unverifiable information that Austin Jones was not working alone when he was being predatory to his underage fans. On the 17th of June, someone left a comment on one of Joy's videos that really summed up her entire channel and her MO. The comment read, I like how you find stories that everyone else has covered, highly offensive stories that would easily give you the moral high ground. Then you beat the interest out of them with a baseball bat until everyone is puking with sickness and tiredness of them. And then you go on and on about the stories for another month or two, like a broken record, with facts quickly bleeding into shady innuendo. And finally, false accusations, until the original story is barely recognizable. I think this is your special talent, smiley face. P.S. Shooting us a double bird while declaring your self-awareness only alienates us, even your supporters. What you're saying is that, yes, you are aware that you are as usual beating a dead bird, and that we can go f ourselves if we don't like it. Your view count is all that matters, and that is all that matters. Joy got a lot of criticism for her Austin Jones video, or maybe it was just a few negative comments. She tends to respond to everything and never takes criticism. Anyways, on the 17th, she released a twit longer addressing people saying that her video might be scaring or traumatizing to children or victims. She writes in one section, My issue is that these kids need to know this information. They need to have a small amount of fear in them about putting themselves in danger with the actions they may take. We give our children these technological devices that connect them to the whole world and allow themselves to be shared with everyone and everything. That is a huge responsibility. And we live in such a hyper-sexualized society that it's more common for kids to be sending one another genital shots than what we are aware of. And I'm trying to be real with young people and teenagers and explain their actions and consequences in a real life way. And after this, she announced another rant video was on the way. And it comes, and it's another video saying Austin Jones might be working with others. After that, Joy went on a live stream and it was apparently a mess. She allegedly had a woman on who had her kid on camera and this woman pointed to the child and said, and this kid's father is a lovely people. Also on this day, Joy had a text conversation with Rose Hall. We know of this from Joy's Google Drive that she released in 2018 that I keep referencing. In the conversation, Joy tells Rose that someone is lying about her and accusing her of fraud and wants to call on the phone about YouTube drama. Apparently, people were reporting Rose's GoFundMe, including a Joy Sparkle BS A-log named Eobard Tan. People were skeptical of what she was using the GoFundMe for, and Rose didn't know what to do. Joy was trying to tell her to post what she spent the money on, and that people wanted to know where the $2,000 of the funds went. To be fair, I really don't think this would have had nearly the amount of drama involved with it if Joy wasn't involved. The next day, on the 18th, Joy posted another Austin Jones video. This was her ninth video on Austin Jones. And then she went live again, where she interviewed someone named Anna Scanlon and complained about her health issues some more. Sometime in this day, Joy had a phone call with Rose, which Joy recorded and posted to her Google Doc to expose Rose. On the 19th, Onision decided to poke the bear that is Joy and privately DM'd her. We know of this because Joy wrote about it on Twitter. She wrote, Gonna go live and go through these messages, guys. You are gonna sh your pants. Who wants a Tuesday pick-me-up? OMFG, you guys are gonna die at this recent convo. This is so much fun. So, at Onision says I need to either debate him or be sued. I chose to be sued, and he loses his sh and says I'm a coward, lol. Here's a taste of what's to come. At Billy Don Webb, at Ayala Karina. You don't get to bully women forever. I know my legal sh 
Greg, at Keemstar. Then Onision proceeded to post the contents of their DMs, of him challenging her to a debate. Then Onision made Joy's attention-loving dreams come true, and tweeted out, I challenge, at JoySparkleBS, to a live discussion as to why this psycho has made 40 to 60 videos about me. Your move. Your move, Kaiba! Because of this new juicy drama of Joy finally getting a reaction out of Onision, Joy went live. After going live, Joy posted a video on the whole subject of her debating Onision. One video from the 20th of June was called Onision to me, debate me now or I'm suing. It was over Onision challenging her to a debate. All I'm really left with is actually confronting them. Oh my God, like he stood me up on you now. He stood me up. We had something set, do you guys remember? I'm gonna have to repost these videos. He stood me up in this situation. Mother I love this. I, well, the only thing I can do is confront her because you have no case, hon. You have no case. You have no case for slander. You have no case because really the big thing is the stalking. I'm not stalking you. You have no case. But you don't. You only want to approach me because you're losing subs and you're losing you're losing views. This is just attention. We see through it, Greg. People are smarter than your manipulation. We're not all teenagers in your harem. Then she went live again. It's just a non-stop stream. Soon, Joy decided via her post to Twitter where and when her debate with Onision was going to be. It was going to be on the 20th of June at 2 p.m. Central Time. The debate did come on the 20th, but I'm just gonna say right now, this stream situation was a mess. Onision started streaming on Lainey's You Now. Joy was streaming on YouTube, and the two wouldn't meet in the middle. Then skeptic YouTuber Jeff Holiday came in, and him and Onision started going back and forth. No, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Me. Yes, I'm calling you a dumb fuck because I'm having to say the same thing over and over to you. <laughs> oh man, man, I'm here. To, I'm here to try and make things easier for the both of you. And well, you, you, and are, you throw some shit. You're, you're a, a hater that was picked by another hater to be an impartial party, a moderator, which is a fucking con job. Get I've been trying dumb, to be nice get, to Greg. Get that trying dumb to be nice. ass over here so I can rip her open. I've been trying to be nice to you, man, but I mean, if if you're gonna be if you're gonna be fucking, you're being fake, fake Rod. Look, this is real. Talk, not, the way I'm talking talk, to you is fucking real, and you're being a fake piece yeah. of. Look, dude, I'm not the person who gets underage fucking yes, girls and yes. talks about whether or not they give him a fucking boner. You're a fucking sleazy scumbag. There you go. You're this, you're this pathetic, rosacea-ridden little fucking dickhead who has there to put a go. bunch of fucking makeup on. Jacqueline Glenn and her pet horse came on to laugh at Onision to his face. Oh my gosh, Jacqueline Glenn wants to be a guest? That would be cool. Here comes Jacqueline Glenn. Maybe. Possibly. Hey. Hey, Greg. Well, love the hair, man. That's good. Hey, do you guys actually want to talk? <laughs> yeah, how's it going? How's your day? Oh, good. Stressed. <laughs> Finally, the two debated. Onision spent the debate trying to convince Joy that she is crazy and failing. You had somebody that was as young as 12 years old on your channel on one of those videos on whether or not she gives you a boner or she's fat, and that is actually legally, you're not in compliance because the parents could sue you since you made money off of that. It's stuff Yeah, like and you saw the picture of that 12 year old. They were more it than covered. Matter. No, no, it doesn't matter. And you, also, you know, and also uh, the video wasn't called, use. Do You Give Me a Boner? I, of course it wasn't. Oh my God, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that's the literal title, Greg. I'm not arguing. <laughs> I'm not arguing whether or not that's the literal title. The you seem mentally is, unstable. Why are you laughing and moving around like a wild person? Honey, I because I honestly Can enjoy. You I love those. Okay, so Onision, here's the thing, though. So what you're saying is I can't prove what you, you heard. You call me Greg. My name is Greg. Well, I'm I'm Midwestern. This is just how I talk. I'll try to remember. Sometimes I have uh, I have memory it's issues. A very so simple four letter word. Yes, and I also have memory issues, and that's a thing too, so my apologies. So you have mental problems, and yet you still take a position of certainty? Joy laughed in his face and ate popcorn. It was awful. This is you begging me to sue you. You say, I, to I, guess I, okay, I told you, I would but I want guess. to be sued. I'm, I've literally said multiple, did you not release all the texts? You only released the ones that like were convenient for you? Is that no, what I really happened? Every one but you have okay to watch so the why is it why is it i keep saying i don't want to sue you because you're broke and you keep saying no i want you to sue me right like how many times do i have to say the same thing for you to get it through your clearly defective brain my brain's not defective fibromyalgia is about nerves. just admitted that you can't even remember my name and it's four letters i told you that sometimes i have memory problems that i'll do my best you're guessing right now you're putting words problem. in my mouth 
a disease, as you just admitted, and it's a sickness affecting the body or mind. So, ah! I got the I want the facts! <laughs> that, that was the literal definition. Are you going to run away from this now, considering I just proved myself right, that it's literally an illness? You sound like a robot, because you now is not a good platform. I heard something illness. Try again. I think that you should probably respect- I just looked up the definition, the and because I saw two sentences, I'm a doctor, and I know about autoimmune illness. Absolutely. I told you what an illness is. By definition, it fit you. You want everyone, the facts? Go get the facts! Everyone, Go get the facts! Facts! Go get the facts! You, can, you guys can facts, see what a fraud is. And the two were so annoying. But to be fair, Joy was much less annoying. Eventually, Joy pissed off Onision so bad he stormed off. I'm not begging. So, I'm telling you that that's, you said I need to take one or the other. You even agreed. We have your agreement that you would. I want you to because I want you to prove your case. You need to prove. Prove I'm wrong. Right, you are not so, bully and you're not just um, threatening people. Hey, that's BS. Lainey is going to come talk to you, okay? Yeah, I'm cool. No, you're not. You're actually a terrible then Joy talked to Lainey. Lainey was extremely cold to Joy. Like, I don't bite, I'm not a horrible person, um, and neither are you, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, if you ever need to talk I, about I, something. When it, honestly, I, it's just that I'm tired of all this, you know what I mean? Right, and it's because it's like, not it, fair it, to you. It's nonstop about stuff that I feel is not even like, I don't know, is, is blown out of proportion. Sure. And it's like I said, I agree that's not fair to you. <laughs> and then it ended. Joy annoyed Onision so bad he stormed off in narc rage. And it was pretty funny. After this, the two had a lot of content. Onision decided to paint himself and his spouse as the winners and the victim in the debate. Meanwhile, Joy went on to laugh in glory at making Onision look like an idiot, which to be fair, isn't hard. This caused Joy to get a lot more subs. Onision also started to focus on trying to discredit Joy's illnesses. If you ever want the Twitter community to be on your side, get Onision to try to go against you. These attacks from Onision gave Joy more support. Joy ended up on on the 21st, DMing Onision to finish their debate. Onision just repeatedly called her a liar. Joy responded kindly to the DMs, which made her look like the better person. But it's a low bar to look better than Onision. The same day as this, behind the scenes, Rose submitted how her funds from the GoFundMe were being used. We know of this from Joy's Google Drive, which I keep referencing. The funds were for hotel rooms, taking the kids out, getting transport, buying clothes for the court date, buying furniture for the kids when they returned home, and just other things for the children. It didn't look bad to me, but later on, Joy would use this to expose the mother for taking her abused kids out to eat a few times. The day after this, in the time span of two days, it was recorded that Joy had made 13 new videos on Onision because of the stream. In one of the videos, Joy said, Lanybot, I'm coming for you and Onision saw this as a threat to his spouse and asked people to report it. Onision's spouse even called the police about it. Joy then went live to talk to Sarah, an underage girl living with Onision. The debate was eh. It was Sarah's friend constantly interrupting Joy for accidentally misgendering Lanybot or Kai. Um, then my response to you is, um, first, first things first, I'd like to say what everyone is saying in the comments, which is that uh, Lainey goes by they them pronouns. The second thing I'd like to say is that everyone's disorder, uh, regardless of, you know, if, whether or not it's anxiety or depression, is different for that person. She is in a state. Because okay. this, it, it would be, like, she she literally, you're, because from her, from the perspective of what happened, she told me something completely different. They. Sorry? They. They, them, pronouns. I don't, know, I don't know how to, like I said, I don't know how to, should I Laney, just, just say Lainey. Because Lainey, during the live stream, she's, from my, from my understanding, she said it was okay. That's why I'm trying to, to do that. So just, just so you're aware. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they said something about not policing it. Ellie, on the other hand, is very... I police it, but that's because I'm not binary myself. So, uh, yeah. moving on. Um... To be fair, Joy said that she misgendered Kai because of fibromyalgia, which is such a stupid cop out. And like you I know. said, Delaney, I might mess up. Just forgive me in advance and let me know and I'll correct it. Or I'll probably, I might say it and then mid-sentence correct it just because of my my own fibromyalgia stuff. So that's, it's not meant to be disrespectful. Okay, so just I'm trying to tell my brain. Okay. Me. Still though, the two young people were just insufferable and it was all kind of a win for joy at the time joy is crazy but she was debating literal children so yeah 
Choi continued to mock Onision on social media and spamming videos about him responding to her. On the 23rd of June, she posted up more and more videos that it would be impossible to keep up with. She announced she was going to make eight more videos in the next two days, and in three days, she had made 19 videos. She really had to be part of the reason YouTube made rules against making tons of videos on one subject in a short period of time. And her tags again were not correct. After spamming out 19 videos in less than three days, she went on a live stream with her new buddy Copper Cab. There she said she had a crush on Copper Cab, and she live reacted to people shoving glass jars up their ass. After that, Joy promised to release receipts for her donations. To my knowledge, she never posted her receipts, except for the $50 one and the $600 ones I've mentioned earlier. And then, on the 24th, she posted three new Onision videos. I think that's 21 videos in four days. Someone listed out all her videos between June 7th and June 24th, and she had uploaded over 50 videos. Joy then, on the 25th, posted more Onision videos, and one of them was titled Onision Dox Me. In it, she made the claim that Onision posted her address. He keeps telling me that I'm a stalker and that I'm trying to physically hurt him and his wife and do all this shit, right? Let's actually take a look and see what he tried to do to me. Actually, you know what? I was gonna play the video. I'm not gonna play the video. I'll just go ahead and tell you. He tries to put out what he thinks is my address. At this point, in Joy's less than a year on YouTube, she had made 184 videos on Onision on her main channel. And then she posted three more videos on Onision to her main channel on the 25th. And she reached 50,000 subscribers around this time. She posted another video on Onision the next day. It was at least one, judging from screenshots. Onision copyright claimed Joy's video. Onision abuses the copyright ID system on YouTube to claim videos that are fair use. Onision has done this to everyone. I believe Joy was in the right here. Her videos were in fair use. But give her an inch and she makes 60 plus videos in a week. She posted at least another three videos on Onision on the 27th of June, and people began to criticize Joy for her behavior again. She was, however, on top of the world after the debate. The next drama Joy got involved in was around the 28th of June. She went on a stream of a friend whose name was Benji James. On the stream, a YouTuber named Cameron joined in and questioned Joy's claims on Onision. And when Joy gave him a non-answer, he pushed her till she claimed to need a break and she never came back to the stream. Joy will address this a little later. Later on, Joy went live on You Now. The next day, Joy made a video on a YouTuber who shot and killed her boyfriend in a prank video. Joy then started to really focus on Onision's copyright claims on her videos. On the 29th, she tweeted out he copyright claimed four of her videos. After this, Joy live streamed again and seemed to be really upset about the stream on Benji James's channel from the day before, according to Lolcow. The day after this, she posted a video to her channel to explain why she was upset about the Benji James live stream. This video no longer exists and I could not find a summary of it. And the month of July comes. Joy has been here for about seven months, less than one year, and she has been in this much drama. On July 1st, Joy says she finally feels well enough to stream, despite her being on a stream about two days prior. She acts like two days between a stream is a long break, and she was still posting daily videos in those two days. She also started to fight with the SJW YouTube channel, Queer Kids Stuff on Twitter, on this day. And then she posted another Onision video about how she was meeting with lawyers about the copyright claims. Then she live streamed about being sick and referred to her roommate as a hot brown skinned guy. The stream, according to Lolcow, lasted over five hours. The next day, the second, Joy started her new obsession, the prank YouTuber, Kid Behind the Camera. But in her first video on this channel, she somehow related talking about internet drama to her being sick. You know, the usual. She announced that she was going to stream later on on the second, but then tweeted out she was at urgent care and had an ear infection. But after that, she did go live and talk about how her roommate was brown again, and called Benji James, her YouTube friend, and white person, brown. And after this stream, she went to the hospital again. We're still on the second. And then, the next day, Joy reported that her video on Onision's military service got removed for bullying and harassment. She tweeted out hoping YouTube would reverse the removal. This would give her a strike and would hurt her ability to stream on YouTube. After this, Joy released a new video on the Daddy of Five situation about Mommy of Five. In this video, she said she was sick and needed to stop making videos, and said that she was going to be taking a break after posting two more videos that day. Joy then uploaded two videos about Onision claiming and removing her videos, and then tweeted out how Onision immediately copyright claimed these uploads. A new player in the lore appeared on July 5th, Moral Virus, also known as Jared, or Jawad. Hi, Jawad! <laughs> 
Jared would become the number one anti-Joy Sparkle BS person, and he is just as much of a loser as everyone else in the story. He started spamming Joy and people who associated with her on Twitter to badmouth her. He also started to document all about Joy on his own Tumblr. Not only that, I found posts on anti-Onision Tumblr saying that Joy was making Onision look sane by comparison. Joy began to brag on the 5th of July about how much money she donated to charity. Meanwhile, Jared, aka Moral Virus, began to poke holes in her claims, pointing out that Joy kept changing the times when she'd post proof of her donations. Also around this time, Onision started planning to debate YouTuber Blair White. Another thing that happened on this day is that Joy started collecting Onision's copyright claims on other YouTube channels, and critiques of her aptly pointed out that Joy had copyright claimed the 17-year-old YouTuber Constigo weeks before. On the 6th of July, Joy reached 60,000 subscribers. She was gaining like 10,000 subs a month, essentially due to her spamming videos. Because of the claims and flagging on YouTube, Joy's second channel, Spur Pinklebow, got completely flagged down on the 7th. She then uploaded two videos to her main channel, pretty much saying, YouTube, and talking about how it was unfair that she can't stream anymore. To be fair, I don't like deplatforming anyone, and at this time, it was due to a flagging campaign from both Onision and Daddy of Five that she was being with. This is of course not okay. Joy was breaking TOS in her taggings of videos, but this wasn't what she was getting in trouble for. Her enemies were abusing the system to silence her. And when you do that, it makes people side with the person being abused. Joy is nuts, but people were abusing the system to silence her, which made her the underdog, and people want to defend the underdog. If you recall, previously, Joy had said some racially questionable things. Well, on July 8th, Joy fully dipped her toes in what I would call straight up ignorance. Is Joy racist? I don't know. But the things she said on this day are... Ugh. On this day, a Twitter user named Sharika Soul decided to start threatening Joy, which what she was threatening Joy over was how Joy wasn't allowed to talk about Onision's military service. This isn't true at all. Sharika is wrong here. Onision made his military records public. Sharika began saying she flagged Joy's channel and was going to ruin her career. Crazy stuff. But Joy's response? Even worse. After some back and forth and Sharika kind of spewing off misinformation about HIPAA laws, Joy decided to go full on, well, she responded to Sharika, a black woman with, ha 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 ha, are you serious? Girl, you made a meme and you are hot sh who shouldn't be addressed? Go burn down a city and call it justice, lol. It just was a nonsensical response. Shrika had mentioned she had written an article about Black Lives Matter, and Joy assumed a lot about her based on her race. For my understandings, Shrika wrote an article criticizing Black Lives Matter at the time. But because Shrika is black, Joy made assumptions about her, to which Shrika responded, You don't want to be known as a racist. You better apologize. To which Joy responded, You don't want to be known as a lying extortionist do you? You better apologize. Don't address me. I know people. I've got business and a banner. Joy was in the right at the beginning of this, in my opinion. Shariko was threatening to take down Joy's channel for false reasons, but Joy somehow came off the worst person. Also, Joy broke TOS by abusing the tagging system. It's not because she talked about Onision talking about its military service. Criticizing and discussing what others put out publicly is part of YouTube. Joy made it even worse by responding to one of the tweets saying how much she loves, and I quote, brown boys. Joy was receiving privacy complaints on her Onision videos about her talking about public information Onision had released himself. She tweets about it, writing, And now this? You've got to be kidding me! At Team YouTube, who can I talk to about this? These people threaten my life and channel, and you protect them? Again, Joy has done enough to violate YouTube TOS at this point, but this wasn't one of them. But Joy has a habit of making everything worse for herself by saying stupid stuff. After this, we are still on the 8th of July, Joy uploaded a video titled, Security Concerns, People Getting Scary With Me and Overstepping Boundaries. Bold of her to make a video about this topic after making so many people uncomfortable with her and her video spamming. Um, well, I, in the same day, I had, two, I had two instances of people who overstepped my boundaries and then when I asked them for space or asked them to stop contacting me, continued on a private level, le little, on a private level, and then even at a public level. It's when people decide to step over my boundaries privately. 
And to me, and I'm not trying to play the woman card, but I'm going to put this out there, especially when it's men, and I'm not trying to be feminist, but I'm saying, as a man, a man can most likely overpower a woman, unless you're a badass. That's why there's a whole nother level of fear and creep factor when it's guys doing it. And it activated some PTSD for me. Um, and I will tell you right now, be making some changes as a result. Um, I'm still, you know, I, I, for the most part, I got over the wave of anxiety and PTSD from it um, and uh, came back from it. It's just, it is, it's, it's very, very scary when people start doing creepy stuff, creepy, stepping over boundaries. You ask them to stop contacting you and they don't. It does, it gets very, very scary when it's personal. After this, Joy announced she would be live streaming on her third channel, Joy Sparkle F It. This is because of Spurpinkle Bow's termination and the strikes on her main channel. Right as the stream started, Joy noticed she got approved to be monetized and ended her stream so she could enable Super Chats. Yes, she claimed she restarted it because of tech issues on her Twitter, but nobody was buying it. On stream, Joy dialed up the racial talk to 11 and began to talk about something she called brown culture. While Joy was streaming and trying to defend herself, apparently Sharika went to start her own live stream on the drama. Apparently, Sharika came off a lot more sensical on her stream. The day passes and Joy tweets out on the 9th that she had tried to appeal her second channel's termination, but it was rejected. Joy got in contact with someone with some power on YouTube to help her out after tweeting this out. On the 9th, Joy's channel, Spurpinklebow, came back up after many bigger YouTubers stepped in on Twitter, including Keemstar. Later on, Joy went on Benji James's channel again, on a stream, where she acted like the racist accusations against her are ridiculous. Joy continued to stream for the next few days, while also throwing out tweets making fun of anyone who thought she was racist. But the next bit of controversy came on July 14th, when she was accused of being an anti-vaxxer. Was Joy an anti-vaxxer? I'll read her statement and let you decide. She said this on Twitter. LOL, never said I was an anti-vaxxer, winky face. I am all for cleaner vaccinations, but not anti-vax. Try again though, whatever that means. I mean, Joy literally thought she could talk to angels and had superpowers. Is it that crazy to also think she might be anti-vax? She probably isn't, I don't know. Just pointing out, it isn't crazy to believe. Joy's strikes seem to be all gone on this day, and Joy started up a live stream on her main channel. Apparently at some point, between the 14th and the 15th, Joy had had posted a video that she was done with talking about Onision, and then posted a new video about Onision. Someone on LolCal writes, holy sh she lasted 12 hours from I'm done with Onision vid. That's not the least bit psychotic now, is it? On the 15th or around, Joy claimed in a video that she was finally recovering from copper toxicity, which is kind of crazy because before, when she talked about going on the medication Lyrica, she said that the copper toxicity was no longer bothering her, like months ago. Girl can't keep her story straight. Apparently Lyrica can mess with metals in your body if you have metal poisoning or something like that. I'm no doctor. And Joy actually addressed people criticizing her months ago about taking Lyrica when she said that she had copper toxicity. And she responded to this by saying that the copper toxicity was no longer affecting her and her doctor said it would be fine. So my Lyrica, which was written out so I could remember how and when to take it, but I stopped taking it because it stopped working. Let me show you the pills. You can see me pouring them. So there's no conspiracy. You can tell this is Lyrica. You can look that up if it's blurry. I've done this before. Don't know if you guys can see it. I'm sure that one of the f edgelords will take this and put it everywhere, as they always do. People are saying, how can you have fibromyalgia and copper toxicity? Because Lyrica is really bad for copper toxicity. When I went to the doctor that gave me these, at that point, I said, I don't think the copper toxicity is affecting me that much, but I haven't been retested. To which the doctor said, let's go ahead and try this. So because I told the doctor I don't think it's much of an issue anymore, and I asked if it should be an issue with any of the meds that they gave me, because it wasn't just Lyrica, I was told, no, it should be fine. That makes me the world's biggest liar, right? Now months later, she is now healing from this copper toxicity again. When Joy returned to her main channel, she started to lose subs. She was losing more subs than she was gaining. Joy was receiving a lot of negative backlash and was fighting with people nonstop on Twitter. On the 16th, most likely to distract viewers from her behavior, Joy and her friend, Sigh That Nerd, posted a fake expose video about Joy. The video is gone, but I remember watching it at the time, and it was just... 
ugh, badly acted. Sometime around this time, another friend of Joy's turned, Negs. Negs tweeted out, around the 18th, Exploiting undiagnosed illness is an insult to those actually suffering with diagnosed illnesses. Moral virus asked Negs why he was now critical of Joy, to which Negs responded, I've spoken out on the behalf of people loved and hated. Now I find myself defending DO5 and Onision? That's when you know shit is messed up. He continued, Well, my reasoning is her friend, the Josh.org guy, started his campaign against them. She said it was tits, and I found it wrong. Her only influence was condoning his actions, which made me defend their right to exist if they are not breaking YouTube terms of service. Also on the 18th, Joy published a video titled, Exposing My Spirituality. Am I an Indigo Child? Talks to Angels? Cults? I also fell into the trap that we all do of, um, you know, finding different labels to attach myself to. Um, because I, you know, I did, I went from that one extreme of not being able to express myself or even explore these parts about myself to having complete freedom with it and not knowing how to deal with it. And so when I went to Europe, when I was in my 20s, I connected with people who were like me. And um, it was amazing. And it came with issues. So for instance, this is one thing that I'll, I'll and I'm not gonna go into any details yet, but um, I attached myself to this idea. Now, let me answer, let me just go ahead and lay it out there. A lot of people think I have a cult, or I did have a cult. Do I have a cult? Did I have a cult? The answer is absolutely not. What people are referring to is, I'm actually starting to shake. You can't see my lower body, maybe you can, I don't know if you can see from the camera, but my lower body is starting to shake because I get uh, anxious talking about this because of all the, uh, the hate that I've gotten. But it's okay, I'm learning to deal with it because I'm learning I don't have to be ashamed of my past. I attached myself to an idea. It's called the Indigo Children. I encourage you, if you are curious, go Google it. It is an idea. Basically, some researchers, <clears throat> I believe in the 60s or 70s, I'm sorry, not even researchers, it was a, a, a psychologist came up with the idea that she believes, this, this is the idea. She saw that the aura of the people coming into the planet from the, uh, or um, what, 1985 and beyond, their indigo, their, their aura is indigo color. And that means they're here to make changes and save the planet. They're very spiritual and they're very uh, gifted at different things and they're here to help. And I heard that and I thought, wow, that sounds like me. I am a lot different now. Now I believe a lot of the new age stuff is horse shit. but I still am who I am spiritually. I have just evolved as a person and let go of certain concepts. I no longer need to attach myself to the term indigo children. Do I believe people can talk to angels? Sure, why not? We can't disprove that. Joy wasn't out of the woods yet either. Also on the 18th, people began to tweet out that they never got refunded for donating to Joy's joke GoFundMe to get Onisi on a fax machine. And Joy decided to poke the bear further and tweeted out, a story of love, lust, racism, and gingers. Racist ramblings for the evening. And attached was a picture of some text. And this text read, roommate plays South Park's The Stick of Truth. He makes his character a ginger Mexican to make me laugh. I asked roommate, hey roommate, are there any ginger Mexicans? He said, you mean gingerkins? And I said, is it racist because you said it and you are brown? Then proceeded to tell him, I think this is Twitter shareable. Sometime soon, the YouTuber Blair White debated Onision. Blair was probably the best at debating Onision because she literally didn't give a crap and just got drunk on stream. Is you've called me a punk ass and a number of other things. You are a punk ass. <laughs> you are very mature. You're and you're, you enjoy your vodka as well. I saw you tweet about how you're gonna get drunk. Well, this is a good life decision. I didn't, I didn't say I was gonna get drunk. I said I'm drinking, and it is a fine life decision. I, I know you chain, I know you chain drunk people drunk. up in your basement because they smoke weed. But regardless, I'm allowed to drink vodka. I'm a, I'm a big girl. I'm a developed girl. Okay, I'm developed. Literally not true. What you just said. You said I know you chain people up in your basement. I've literally never chained anyone up in my basement, and it wasn't okay. because people smoke weed or not smoke weed. Greg, are you getting it now? I'm, I'm, I'm like with you. Are you getting it now? Which was fun to watch. But then Blair took a shot at Joy during the stream. Like, I don't know, honey, listen, this is no shade to like Jacqueline Glenn or anyone else who's ever debated, you know, Joy Sparkle, whatever. Although Joy Sparkle is kind of crazy. Look, it Joy was streaming during the debate, and Blair ended up apologizing to Joy for calling her crazy. But like, Blair wasn't wrong. 
Blair's debate with Onision of course gave Joy like a crap ton of new content, and Joy would soon make a video on Blair White's debate, and it showed how many people were getting tired of her. She would claim that Based Mama, Chambers, Rose Hall, and Nick Monroe ruined her reputation, but even those who were not following that drama were getting tired of her. And on the Blair White video, she received more dislikes than likes. Joy started putting on a lot of weight. This was something that had started since the beginning, but it got really noticeable around this time. And on July 20th, someone pointed out that she had gained weight. Joy was of course really upset about this and blamed the weight gain on her fibromyalgia and diarrhea. I recall at one point, Joy made the claim that all she could eat was pasta and pizza because of her diarrhea. Things didn't really add up. The next day, on the 21st, Joy went live again, probably at like 1am, which is something she often did. In the stream, she described her fibromyalgia as causing inflammation, which apparently is not part of the ailment. She also said on stream that she now allegedly had lupus. Her videos around this time really were getting less views, and she was getting more dislikes and negative comments. Apparently not only this, but Joy put out a video at some point where she alluded to being possibly suicidal, or at least gave one viewer the impression of that. This person reported it to the police. This would result in a wellness check to Joy, and Joy would portray this as doxing and swatting for pity points. But before that, Joy put out more Onision videos. And then Joy did the ultimate f up. It was sometime between the 21st and 22nd of July. Joy went on stream with her YouTuber friend, Mike Nactor. On the stream, well, Joy said black people are stained with poop. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Hashtag ginger can. can. Yes! <laughs> and there's like, there's a, I guess there's a boxer from Mexico that's like pure ginger. But like, I guess he came from a brown and a ginger and he came out just mother ginger, but he speaks like fluent brown. It's amazing. I don't know any language to see that, especially brown. Brown is not a good language. I mean, what is brown? Brown is the color of chocolate, which means it's awesome. Like, my God, yes, it's chocolate and it's turds. Two of my favorite things. I like eating chocolate. If it's, if it's, if it's a healthy poop, it's like a massage from in your insides. So true. It's kind of like butt sex. <laughs> no, because wait, it can't be true because butt sex, like, it's like, it's making friction with the poo. You poo, it's a release of, of poo. You're like, poison. It's on your wiener, and then your little wiener hole gets infected, and then you try to go boof a bitch, and then you, like, get her, you get her infected, and the baby's infected with poo. It's gonna be a poo baby, and that's, that's, you know what? Oh my god. Races of brown people were about people butt fuck and getting poo in their dick and in their wiener hole. And it got they got stained. Confirmed. This was really the final straw for a lot of people. This incident is often referred to as the poo baby incident. Joy didn't address any of this right away and uploaded a couple of videos. One video called, Am I Bullying Onision? And another video announcing that she is now medically obese. She was now losing subs pretty consistently. This would start her gradual decline to reaching below 60K subs. She decided to live stream on the 22nd to address all her controversies. What do you think her excuse for saying that black people were stained by poop in this stream? Well, her excuse was, it was her way of dealing with trauma from having anal sex. Yeah! Also, I wanted to note that in other streams, according to LolCow, Joy had actually said she had never had anal before, but now she had so much anal, she had PTSD from her ex. And then in the stream, Joy made it so much worse. To make it even worse, Joy let on a fan to ask advice. The fan was a young person who explained that they were gay and that they were scared to go to school because of bullying. At the beginning of their tale, they gave an obvious detail that they were underage. Um... Because um, these are elementary, this is an elementary school I'm talking about. I'm actually in a middle school now. And then they asked Joy for advice. Okay, so um, I want to talk about the topic of sexuality because um, I've been um, struggling with that for the past, I want to say, a year now. And um, I'm going to be going to a school where um, the, a majority of the students may be homophobic and I am gay. Interesting, okay. So, um... I um, have been gay for like, I want to say six months, and um, it's kind of nerve-wracking for me. I've been very confused with my um, gen gender identity as well, because um, I, I um, dress like a boy. I sometimes go by they, and um, most people um, 
harass me. Like, I've been harassed in real life for being a homosexual. And, um, I am a female. Which, um, I have been bullied in the past. Um, people did call me gay, which is when I first started thinking about it. Um, it's hard to explain, but, um, now the same people are going to be to my school, and it's going to be that all over again. Damn, okay. And then they ask Joy for advice. Joy's advice? Well, here's the clip. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I mean, I got the shit gay for being gay when I was in school, but, you know, you're going to come out a stronger person from it, so don't, yeah. don't stress too much. Yeah, just don't, 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 yeah. don't stress, just be you, and, I mean, like, I know that... Do whatever the f*** you want. Exactly, just be one. No one f- f***ing cares. <laughs> yeah, f*** them all. Yeah. F*** them all. Like, seriously, if people get upset with you, just rape yeah. them. Just rape them, it doesn't matter. Oh my god, yeah, oh, I got that again. <laughs> Hashtag rape confirmed! <laughs> you see oh, it? Here it is! Yeah, no, just, 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 just straight no. up. You know what? How old are you? I'm, I am 11. You're 11 years old? Yes. Are you serious? Yes, I'm like, alive. Are you serious? 15, 17. That's right. Right after Joy was in controversy for saying black people are poo babies, she told an 11-year-old person to rape their schoolmates. She's a walking PR nightmare. Her subs really dropped after this. And to push the knife even further, Joy's enemy, Sharika Soul, heard of Joy's racist poo baby rant and began to go after Joy again on Twitter. This caused Joy to be manic, and she allegedly, according to Lolcow, streamed all night. She had been streaming 8 to 12 hours at this point and was rapidly losing subs. We are currently on July 23rd, 2017. Sharika didn't leave Joy alone, and on the 23rd, she released an article on Joy called YouTuber Joy Sparkle BS Says Blacks Come From Anal Sex Poop. Instead of just apologizing for saying that black people are a result of anal sex poopies, <laughs> Joy <laughs> Joy uploaded a video on the 24th of July called Saying the N-Word. The video is no longer available, but according to a screen cap of the video, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it came to my attention yesterday that apparently in one of my live streams where we were talking about racism and talking about how ridiculous these accusations are, that the N-word was said not once, but twice. <laughs> so stupid. The reason I didn't come out right away was number one, one to edit the video, but number two, I wanted to talk about what was going on in the stream and who said it and why it looks like I was okay with it. <laughs> it was Joy apologizing. <laughs> I did not catch, it was very late as well. We were up very late. I did not catch and I was not aware as well, most of the people on my panel were not aware the word was even uttered. It was Joy apologizing for someone else saying the N-word on the street. The N-word was said, as far as I've been told, twice. It was Joy apologizing for someone else saying the N-word on her stream. Then in countries, in different countries, they don't see the N-word the same as ours. I see the sensitivity with it, and so I'm gonna be very sensitive, and especially because I have a lot of brown friends. And I'm gonna continue to say brown, because saying people of color reminds me of the phrase colored, and that, I was always told, is a, a racist term. I, I heard people's racist grandparents say that term growing up, so I'm not comfortable saying POC or people of color, so I say brown. Oh my God. <laughs> the poop baby joke. <laughs> there you have it. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I will continue on. I'm gonna have more content. Nope, not a racist, but I'm somebody that does mis make mistakes and does mess up. And I hope that you can forgive me. I hope you can be forgiving to Lama Skeptic. And it's up to you guys what you choose to do. This video got ratioed with dislikes. <laughs> this video got ratioed with dislikes. Joy lost 300 subscribers between the 24th and the 25th and started tweeting out stupid stuff to try to pretend she wasn't floundering. Here's one of her tweets. Hashtag no lives matter. Hashtag not a goddamn one. Hashtag racism for attention. Hashtag do you want to uber for real? Do you want to up or hashtag do you want? Okay, whatever. Hashtag all lives suck. Hashtag everyone sucks dick. Hashtag butt sex. Hashtag waffles. Hashtag sarcasm is racist. Joy continued to try to deflect posting an anti-feminism video on the 25th, and then she made another huge mistake. She went on YouTuber Petty Page's stream to defend herself and her racially ignorant statements. She explained herself to Petty Page, who was extremely patient with the shrill Joy Sparkle BS. This was being very playful. People took that and said, 
you are a racist. I mean, and I was just laughing. I'm like, really? So when I said what I said, the joke, the punchline wasn't poo babies and people who are, you know, of, of any kind of color or, you know, or brown or whatever that they come from poo. The joke was to say, this is so ridiculous that people think that. I'm going to say a crazy, outlandish, ridiculous statement to shock people to show them how silly they're being. Does that make sense? Like go so far in sarcasm to show you you're being ridiculous. I did watch your um, I Apologize But video and um, in it you said that um, the joke was mainly tailored uh, towards the context and the intent of what you were trying to say and what you were trying to put across. Now it, it all has to do guys with intent and context. My intent was to, to showcase how silly it was that people were saying that about me. However, exactly. one of the things that I wanted you maybe to possibly understand is also the impact of what you say. Joy still didn't apologize though. Same day as this, the YouTuber Peter Mon made a video on Joy as well. Basically, Peter Mon lightheartedly tells Joy to apologize better and gives her advice. So, hey, listen, she, you know what? She, she made, uh, we're gonna get to this in a second, but she made this apology video and made it very clear that she is, she is not racist. She will tell you a hundred times, she is not racist, don't come for her, she's not racist, she's not racist, she's not racist. Well, honey, if somebody tells you something enough, you might wanna take a look at that, okay? Joy was receiving criticism from much larger drama channels now for these racist comments. Joy never apologized, but she took to social media to claim that she did. After completely showing her ass nonstop, Joy took to Twitter again on the 26th and decided to throw a passive aggressive tweet out, writing, Reminder, everyone else on this platform can have dark humor. However, I am not allowed, lest everyone lose their sh GTFO. And soon on the 26th, Failure Accomplished, co-host of the Kumite, a popular live stream at the time, and Andy Worski began to take shots at Joy. Extremely reasonable, fair shots. But Joy could not deal with being disliked. Joy continued her ignorant comments on this day. Joy tweeted at Sharika, claiming that Sharika was racist against white people. And Sharika responded by saying that her husband was white, making her son half white. So she obviously had no issue with white people. Joy keeps taking L's. After this, Joy decided to take a break from Twitter. And then after that, she put up a video about Sharika and played victim. The video is now gone, like everything else. But yeah. Joy then tweeted, very shortly after saying she was going to take a break, to say that she was going live. The day passes, and we are now on the 27th. And on this day, Joy posted another video saying she was sick. Rapsion had had enough of Joy at this point. And around the 28th of July, he commented on one of her videos writing, Dude, seriously, f you. You're a pathological liar. Maybe you do have some medical issue, but no f***ing person who has all the things you claim to have. And it just seems to be getting more and more every goddamn week. Could you upload and do everything you're doing? Go to an actual doctor instead of diagnosing yourself with issues you clearly do not have or are making up for sympathy. Your victim card of blaming your mistakes on illness isn't an excuse to one's actions. You said, your doctor said, you did not have fibro, but here you insist you still do. I don't think you understand what medical issues you actually have, you delusional, lying f When you make up lies about your medical issues, it takes away from people who actually have those medical issues. Good job, you selfish c I'm glad you're losing subscribers, as people actually see who you really are. Same day as this, Worski went on his show to discuss how Joy Sparkles threw shade at him on Twitter. Around this time, Joy went on Twitter and started to respond to the lockout thread and the rumors about her. Joy then went live on the 28th for five plus hours. Joy on the 29th then announced she would be posting a new video to dispel another rumor. And then soon after this, Repsion announced he would be making a video on Joy in the comment section of her video. He wrote, I hope you're ready for the video that I'm working on about you. I expect to see 10,000 million videos from you, but after this is finished, you will have no recovery options. Truth will always prevail and leak in through the crack of lies. And then he tweeted out, I hope to have this video released by August 20th. That is the release date currently. If things come along faster, it'll be up before then. 
This was really the beginning of the end. The next day, Choi went live for many hours to flip out about the Repsion video. I don't have the footage of this though. Choi wasn't out of the woods yet. On the 31st, her ex-friend, Amanda, appeared out of the woodwork to talk about how crazy Joy was. Outside of YouTube, she wrote, Everything you're saying is absolute truth. 20 years of experience with her antics in the flesh. She pretty much turned to YouTube after I got her out of my life. Counseling her as a friend was nearly a part-time job. She would rant exactly like her videos for hours, consuming sometimes entire weeks of evenings and late nights. She's cunning, manipulative, and lives her life going from one fraudulent act to another, mooching her entire life stealing identities, money, creating false documents of all sorts. She's never been independent, and her sole identity is living the victim role. I'm dumbfounded at witnessing her psychotic ass mouth public broadcasts. Now I can't say Joy ever stole identities or money for sure, but her reputation as a swindler is, yeah. And then Martin Lewis decided to chime in on the Joy racist joke drama. Repsion also continued to comment on Joy this day, tweeting, Jesus Christ, I'm officially saying it now. Joy Sparkle's BS is a nutcase. Stay away. Can't wait to bring this to the public soon. The pressure was on. And then Chambers also put out a video on Joy on this day. Here's a log house summary of the video. TLDW, filmed by Chambers, only with no one else. Chambers states, Katie is harassing Rose, and Rose wants it to stop. Rose is not going to take any money from Katie. Katie is pushing for inside information and pushing hard. Katie got mad and accused Rose of jacking up the GoFundMe amount. Chambers called Katie's channel a dumpster fire and said to leave Rose alone because she wants nothing to do with it. Joy went live to talk about the Chambers video. According to post, she kept repeating she can prove her side, but didn't prove anything in the stream. And then August comes, and we are eight months into this godforsaken hellhole that is Joy Sparkle BS drama. August 2017. August 1st starts with EgoCast, a channel that was very critical of Joy, doing a stream with a very popular YouTuber, Bearing. In the stream, Bearing threw some shots at Joy. Bearing is a good dude in my opinion. I don't know, going back to Joy, I just can't, you know. It, Cause either so there's something really wrong with her. In did, which she ever, case, did she respond to you? No, she never has. Like, it you're, was you're joking. So she makes fun. 80,000 videos of it, nothing say a word to her. And you make like a fucking 10 part series and she just got a <laughs> It was a 10 part series. I did, honestly, it's it's only been like eight videos total. Joy fans started to go after Repsion on this day as well, trying to convince him not to talk about Joy. Apparently at some point, Joy got tests done, medical tests, and on August 2nd, Joy went live and said she was going to show the results of her clinic visit to prove she was really sick. According to Lokau, she said her test results proved she had lupus and got a positive ANA test. Joy would later post images of her results to prove her illness, but that would raise even more questions. Repsion responded to her live stream on Twitter, writing, if you think this is going to stop me, you're absolutely wrong, smiley face. And Joy got another kick in the metaphorical nuts. Chambers tweeted out all the text message conversations between Rose and Joy, which showed Joy spamming Rose with constant messages and Rose just politely shrugging her off. Joy then started to go on a stream to fight against these attacks. And apparently the stream was a mess. Shocker. There was some more messy streams because of course, Joy is just a constant stream of information and all the information she gives contradict each other. And then on the 4th of August, Joy uploaded a 32 Two minute video called Goodbye and announced she was leaving YouTube. The comment section was lit with Mr. Repsion and Chambers laughing at her. Oh, and then she went live on you now. From reading responses to the stream, Joy said she got her health test results over the phone, causing people to question the validity as doctors don't disclose information like this over the phone. Everything is so sketchy with her. Repsion continued to hint at his Joy Sparkle BS video and one of Joy's henchmen responded with, whoa bro, wicked cool, you're making a video. Oh, that's gonna be full of BS and make my friend look bad. But you know, views, right? Then on the 6th of August, another Joy Defender came in to go after Repsion, Mike and Actor. Mike and Actor made a video against Repsion. The video is no longer up. Joy was off of YouTube for a day and a half after announcing she was leaving and then posted another YouTube video on the 7th. She posted a video about Riley J. Dennis, a trans YouTuber. Very important stuff. She apparently got ratioed on this video with dislikes. Peter Mon made a video the following day, making fun of Joy's quick return. The video was titled, Joy Sparkles Says Goodbye and Comes Back. 
So I get up on her channel, right? Because I was like, I ain't heard nothing about old Joy Sparkles in the last couple days. So I get up on her video, and I see that three days ago she posted a goodbye video. What? I was like, oh, shit, the heat in the kitchen, baby, is too much for her. She's got to get out. I can already tell it. You know, her hair's looking a little frizzy from that summer sun. So anyway, I will say this about her. People are like, well, what Joy Sparkles is, and they say Joy Sparkles doesn't have any redeeming qualities. And I think that's shit when you say that to people, okay? Everybody has redeeming qualities. Sometimes we just don't know what they are, you know? I'm sure she has a lot of redeeming qualities. I, I struggle finding them in her videos, but gal, I'm sure you have them. Where I think, I believe that most, good pe most people are good at heart, okay? And the best of it is, I notice as I'm watching this goodbye video at the very end when she says, and I will also link resources for you in case you need medical help, when the entire video is about how she couldn't find any resources to find medical help. Is that not the blind leading the blind? I mean, girl, who are you helping with your resources? Keep your resources to yourself. So anyway, I go on here. That was three days ago. One day ago, she posts a video, Riley J. D uh, Dennis, Unfair Strikes Protecting Freedom of Speech. So I go and watch this video. Now listen, I'm, I'm now at 39 minutes of watching old gal Joe jo Spoit, Joy Spoit. I cannot go through that one as well as that. I am now at 39 minutes of watching old Joy Sparkles, okay? And halfway through the video, she comes for everybody in the video and says, now don't lose your tits. Don't lose your tits. I said, if I found something pressing that I needed to make a video about, I would. I was like, girl, I don't remember that from your video. So I go back and I start watching the video again. So I will say this, if she did say that in that 32 minutes and 29 seconds of a video, I didn't find it in there, okay? Sometime on the 9th, Repsion tweeted out that Joy, in a panic, seemed to be deleting videos to stop him from making a video on her. On the 10th, Joy had another You Now live stream. It was later uploaded to YouTube, though the re-upload is also gone to time. But apparently, she showed the fake Lyrica bottle again. According to LolCow, she allegedly tried to imply Chambers supported a pedophile. It just seemed like another massive mess. Apparently, she called fibromyalgia an autoimmune disease, which, yeah. From what I understand, and that's wrong. Joy's break from YouTube was extremely short-lived because she posted another video on the 11th in response to Onision. It looked like Joy was filming in a hotel room and Joy, I believe at some point, made a point she would only come back to YouTube if a topic was important enough for her to report on. But it seemed like there was a topic almost every day to report on since her goodbye. And on the 12th, she posted a video on the riots in Charlottesville. She made two more videos that day as well. One announcing that she was coming back, but she never really took a break? And another video about Trisha Paytas on Celebrity Big Brother. She then, after coming back, decided to call out Repsion and tweeted, At Mr. Repsion, you are a bandwagon jumping attention seeker. I can't wait for your video. I've not yet responded because you aren't worth my time. The next day, she continued to tweet at Repsion, writing, At Mr. Repsion, what have I ever personally done to you specifically? Why not come to me in private instead of hyping up a video for weeks? At Mr. Repsion, why not give the respect you are asking for while saying you don't care if others respect you? Well, asking for respect. At Mr. Repsion, I'm going to challenge you, come at me in private, like an adult. If you have an issue, as you requested others, but blocked me from doing. At Mr. Repsion, says I'm having a meltdown by responding. Then what were your numerous comments and tweets over the last weeks? Your meltdown? At Mr. Repsion, let's be very clear. I will never make a lot of videos about you. You aren't worth my time. I know you would love it, as you keep repeating. And then she quote tweeted him and said, I'm standing up for myself and you still can't do it, can you? Come to me in private like an adult, tweeting me while blocking me for weeks? It's funny considering Repsion became enemy number one of both Joy and Tonision. Then she went on stream again to complain about Repsion some more. After that stream, she announced she'd be streaming again the next day and announced that the subject would be horse while Joy was spazzing about Repsion, so was her pal, Mike, an actor. And he and Repsion started going back and forth on YouTube. The videos of the back and forth are no longer on YouTube as the two of them took them down. Joy kept going live and making claims for the next two days. And her frantic activity got her sub count to drop below 60,000. Not only that, Peter Mon made another Joy video about her full-blown comeback on the 13th. And Joy got another medical diagnosis, according to a stream on the 13th. Now to add to the rest of her problems, she also claimed to have an eating disorder. Repsion gave an update to his Joy exposed 
exposed video on August 14th, posting, I'd like to give a heads up that I will not be holding anything back regarding Joy Sparkle's upcoming video. Changing my presentation style. Been debating back and forth with myself, but after seeing her claiming I've committed insurance fraud, which I haven't, time to unleash hell. And in advance, I give every single person permission to download and re-upload my video because I know people are going to attempt to flag it. And then he went on stream at some point to talk about the intent of his Joy video. A lot of people think that I'm working on an exposed video and I'm not. I'm not making an exposed video. Like I don't care about exposing anybody. This is about examining, criticizing behaviors and why people are... If people wonder why people keep accusing her of lying, it's because there's a past that she has behind her and that past is kind of indicative of the future in terms of like certain patterns. There's certain patterns that she displays, right, that is currently ongoing with the same patterns that existed years ago that are still being exhibited right now here on YouTube. That's what my video is going to be about. Behind the scenes, Joy continued to talk to Rose Hall about donating, even after all the drama and fighting. We know of this because Joy dumped all their text messages into a Google Drive to expose Rose for being a scam artist, which it's up to you to decide if you think Rose is a scam artist or not. I personally didn't feel that way after reading the evidence. Repsion's video did have to be postponed because of family issues, and on the 15th, Repsion tweeted out that his family comes first. On the 15th of August, Joy was tired of people questioning her Lyrica medication in the Nature's Bounty bottle and tweeted out a statement. For anyone who ever questions taking lyrics and the pill bottle, here it is. Now you can look on my channel anytime and see the proof and info. And attached was the Nature Bounty bottle picture, and also claiming that her friend had taken the pills out of the prescription bottle and put them in the labeled bottle to help her with her brain fog. Joy's animosity continued the next day, and she started to at Repsion, trying to get him to DM her. And then when Repsion said he needed time to deal with his dad's health the same day, August 16th, Joy responded with well wishes to Repsion's family. This came off as fake to most people. She also tweeted out, at Mr. Repsion, the bullshit. I am praying for your father and family. I hope he is okay and healthy. And if you have any questions, just ask. Also, apparently on the 16th, according to LawCow, Joy claimed that she also now had parasites in her. I'm not a doctor, but this shit is getting crazy. She said she got the parasites from raw fish. On the 16th, Joy showed her medical charts on screen by recording her screen with most likely her phone. I can only judge from screen caps. On this day, Joy just really put out a lot of medical information. Repsion said he wanted his Joy video out soon, and part of me thinks this was all a, I'm sick, how can Repsion criticize a sick person attempt. I even found a post where she also said she had hypothyroidism and something called polymyalgia rheumatica. The next day, the 17th, Joy posted a video on the Barcelona, Spain terrorist attacks and there was a pinned comment to it, apologizing that she had let ads be on the video for the first 500 views. Then, same day, she uploaded a video saying she was now officially diagnosed, despite her claiming at other times that she was diagnosed at those times. It's also confusing. Maybe I'm missing something, but I feel like the story keeps changing. Then she went on You Now and was very, uh, joy-like according to Joy Trackers on Lolcow. She guested with Martin Lewis. Meanwhile, at some point in the day, according to Joy's Google Drive of evidence, Joy texted Rose, showing that she was unable to donate to Rose's GoFundMe. And now we are on the 18th, and Joy goes live at 1 a.m. And then later in the day, announced she was leaving YouTube and transitioning to vid.me. She never really did either of those things. And then something happened, something that would give Joy even more reason to stay. On the 18th, Joy announced that the Daddy 5 gag order was lifted. Apparently, she went on camera to say she had to wait for Tim Conlon. She had to wait for Tim Conlon and Rose to give their blessings in order for her to talk, according to a Kiwi Farms post. But, uh, that didn't stop Joy. On the 19th, she announced she was making a series on Daddy 5, and the first video would be on what happened in court, and the video went up the same day as the announcement. Here's a brief summary of the video, as the video is gone. The summary reads, Just finished the video. 1. LOL. She accidentally said they contacted the CIA. 2. Doing preemptive clickbait. This story has multiple parts. Stay tuned. More at 9. Doesn't do much to help her. I've got good intentions, guys. Narrative. 3. You don't have to convince me that Mike and Heather are sh people. You don't even have to convince me that Chambers is a sh person, as I've always gotten a weird vibe from her. And she never posts real receipts. There is no reason this video needs to be in multiple parts. Please just admit that you're milking this for all it's worth, Joy. Joy then on the 20th, 
decided to add more to the crap she was involved in by posting an hour-long Skype call between her and Chambers. The call is apparently Joy taking certain people not liking her as a conspiracy to destroy her reputation and is also her blaming Base Mama and Chambers for Repsion turning on her. According to Lolcow, Joy claimed that Rose's lawyer, Tim Conlin, reviewed and approved all her videos. This was obviously not the case. Apparently, according to an Anon's report on the Skype call, Tim Conlin considered dropping the case because all the drama amongst the YouTubers. I think from reading the summary of the call, those involved, like Rose and the lawyer, wanted help promoting the GoFundMe. They probably thought it was a good idea to make videos to help and talk to creators. They probably weren't able to predict that this would accidentally cause Joy to non-stop spam videos. And when Joy was confronted that this wasn't the best idea by all the people involved, Joy thought this was an attempt to slander and silence her. But that was my interpretation from reading the descriptions on various websites. Joy's claims got even crazier on this day as well. And she claimed, get this, a lolcow.farm hacker stole $450 from her PayPal. Chambers responded to Joy on Facebook on the 20th of August. She said that the phone call Joy posted was her trying to smooth things out with Joy, and that basically the whole thing had turned into a reality show of personalities, fighting over the glory of the case while Rose and Tim wanted everyone to stop. Meanwhile, on Joy's side, Joy announced after a few days of taking a medication called prednisone, she was well enough to go outside running and took a selfie. People started to question Joy on social media because of this. The next day, she put out another Daddy of Five video. According to Lockow, the events detailed in the video were completely distanced from reality. More and more and more people began to question Joy over on Twitter. On the 22nd of August, Matt Jarbo, aka Monday Matt, came back to criticize Joy and tweeted, Just so we're 100% clear on this issue, Joy Sparkle's BS is garbage. Which Joy said in response that she wasn't because she donated money. And Matt responded by saying, shut the f up and saying he doubted Joy would have donated if she did not have to pretend that she was just and moral. He went hard on her on Twitter and on YouTube, calling her out for her tags and whatnot. And then the awaited day came. Rebsion finally posted his Joy Sparkle BS video on the 23rd, titled, Why I Don't Like Joy Sparkle. He eventually renamed it the Joy Sparkle BS Files. The video started out with Rebsion talking about how he found out about Joy. How did I come across Joy Sparkles? Well, it just so happens that we had a common enemy on the YouTube platform. The one and only Garegi Poo, also known as Onision. When Joy Sparkles first started her channel, I came across her very small channel. I think she had roughly under 3,500 subscribers at the time. But somebody sent me a video that she did on Onision. I was like, wow, I agree. This was a really good first few videos, like two or three videos that she made on Onision. I didn't think anything of it. I just thought it was, you know, a normal Onision video. A lot of people on YouTube make videos responses to Onision. However, over time, I noticed something. After I promoted her, she got a couple thousand subscribers from it, because I made a, another Onision video response myself. Um, I saw a behavior which kind of just put me off. I didn't really think anything of it, but I just, I just noticed that she started making a sh ton of Onision videos. And not just like... Like, over the course of my time on here on YouTube since 2009, I've made 18 videos. That's about two videos per year on Onision. Um, but in the matter of, like, two, three months, she had made over 100 videos on Onision. And how he began to start questioning her and her behavior on the platform. I didn't really think anything of it. Uh, Joyce talked about it. Didn't really have a problem with her doing that. Until I started noticing the same trend yet again. The same behavior. At this point, this is where my... My flag, my red flag, was blinking in front of me. Blinking. Flags don't blink, they wave. Waving in front of me. And I'm like, okay, let's check out some of her Daddy of Five videos. And one video turned into three, three videos turned into five, five videos turned into ten, ten turned into twenty, twenty turned into thirty, thirty turned into forty. A lot of Daddy of Five videos. Now, I'm not criticizing people making lots of videos, but something that I should mention here is that a lot of videos were being split up into different parts. Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, which is it's not wrong. I'm not saying lots of videos is wrong. What I'm saying is that information over the smallest, tiniest little details were being conveyed all in different videos. And thus, if you split videos up in a bunch of different chunks, people are going to come in confused and not know exactly what's going on. People are not going to be able to see Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, Part 4, Part 5. They're just not going to be able to see that. It's best to do one big, long video. 
He mostly had an issue with how Joy would say she has information on the Daddy of Five case when there was a gag order, and it was a red flag to him. But in any case, it eventually got to the point where Joy started saying this. I will not be talking about what happened in court Friday or today. I did say, hey, I sat and I had a moral dilemma, and I thought to myself, I can sit here and I can release stuff, I can sit here and I can say things, but not going to because I'm afraid that could jeopardize the children. Yeah. Everybody keeps talking, and I've shut up, and they're screaming, Shut up! You can't talk! Well, I've stopped talking from my choice, but you're still talking. It's insanity. Tote says then don't even say you can say stuff. What does it know? I'm putting out there that I have the freedom of speech right now. I have every right to say things. The gag order has nothing to do with me. I can say whatever I want, and I can say that I can say whatever I want. This is the part where I started to take a step back and really critically think and take an observation about some of the things that she was doing. Because whether or not she had legal or illegal information. The point is, she kept saying on her YouTube channel that she has information on this case, which has a gag order on it, which means you can't talk about it, which could potentially, if you did talk about something about the case, could potentially be used against the people who are currently ongoing in the case. Repsion also talked about how Rose was terrified of Joy. Well, there's also another reason that I blocked her, and that's the biological mother of Emma and Cody. Are you worried about Joy? I'm worried that if she has information on this case and I piss her off, she might come after. She keeps saying she has information and I don't know what she has and I don't want to lose my kids because of unstable people. Now when I saw this from Rose, the biological mother of Emma and Cody, the rightful mother of the two kids in the Daddy of Five case who were being physically abused, that's when I said, okay, you know what, I'm out. Finally, Repsion went over Joy's New Age past. He went over her beliefs and her believing she could talk to angels. So if you search up what the Indigo movement is, one of the first links you get is from a website which Katie posted on. Children that have been diagnosed with ADHD, ADD, and autism have actually been misdiagnosed. They state that there are actually ind indigo children who have been given these labels simply due to a lack of understanding by professionals. They encourage parents of such children to fight against this by turning down medication for their children or any therapies suggested or any special education. Basically, they suggest that there is no such thing as ADHD, ADDD, autism, and parents should simply let their indigo child develop in their own way. The movement, and this is a key point here, also dismisses mental health problems, as well as children. Adults are targeted on the issue. We have indigo children, crystal adults, star children, but basically it all revolves around the same idea that people are born with ind indigo aurora around them. Both children and adults in the movement suggest that people that with many mental health issues, especially bipolar, are actually indigo and they should not enter into any form of treatment, be it medication or any other therapy. He called her a con artist. Um, but let's start from the very beginning with angelic channeling. Um, she was hired by a company, a music production company, to do angelic channeling. Um, and I have to ask this, this, this question. Did you pay people to perform angelic, angelic channeling? Because if you paid people, if people came to you and paid money for you to perform angelic channeling, then I am accurate to say that you're a fraud, that you are a con artist, because I don't believe in angelic channeling. I don't believe in casting out demons. I don't believe in people telling you your future or using any sp sort of spiritual uh, indigo power or ability, psychic abilities to reach out and talk to dead people or whatever it be. I find that area of new age, of whatever you want to call it, to be a scam. Then he went over her health issues, like how she cured a tumor with herbs. Uh, next up, uh, you had a inoperable tumor on your neck uh, that was killing you. Now you talk about this in your podcast, um, and you also talk about this in your videos. However, on your podcast, you kind of give a different explanation. You mention uh, oxygen hydrogen therapy, um, and how that helped you with your, your tumor um, on your neck. Uh, but then on your videos on you now, you mention how you cured this inoperable tumor that was killing you with garlic and onions. Uh, Josh, you see, she in quotes cured cancer with herbs. I sure did. I really did. Um, but if you want to get judgmental and rude about it, go for it. <laughs> I did actually. And it wasn't cancer. It was a tumor. It was a non, it was a non cancerous tumor but go ahead and just keep making fun of me go for it what did i use what did i use back then um i used garlic um onion onion i literally did I use onion um olive leaf golden seal oh god what i used i used several things back then um for my liver 
I did dandelion. Uh, and then you mentioned, this is what really confuses me, is that you mentioned in a blog, on your Tumblr blog, Miss Katie Smith, uh, you talk about your tumor um, a bit, and you talk about how it nearly killed you. Specifically state that you used medicine and antibacterial fungi uh, stuff to uh, remove it. The main theme of Repsion's video is how Joy's behavior and past caused people to have doubts, and he just wanted to highlight all that is out there and why people had issues with her. If you have an archangel who diagnoses, not diagnose, if you have an archangel who gives you physical symptoms and tells you what's wrong with your body, can you not understand why people may doubt some of your claims about the health issues that you claim that you, you may or may not have? I'm simply presenting information that is already out there and why people doubt the things that you say, and why that there seems to be a loophole and inconsistency in nearly every story and everything you claim about yourself. Now, a lot of people think that I'm going to, this video is all about, you know, disproving or debunking her illnesses that she claims, because she does claim in quite a few videos that she's had mystery illnesses. And I'm not going to debate here on a YouTube channel, because I'm a mental health advocate, if she has fibromyalgia or she has depression, or she has post-traumatic stress disorder, or she has borderline personality disorder. I can't diagnose these things. I won't diagnose these things because I'm not a licensed person to do that. But what I can do is examine behaviors, and that's the crux of this video, is examining behaviors and inconsistencies that she herself has put out online. So let's take a look at some more, shall we? And he questioned her copper toxicity claims. Here's the thing about a copper IUD, Joy. There's not a single link between a copper IUD and copper toxicity. None, zip, zilch, nothing. There's no link between them. There's no scientific data, there's no medical data to showcase that this is a thing. At all. And it's not a thing, because with a copper IUD, there's protection around the little copper coil that's a very, 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 very small. There's a protection around that. Um, so that it cannot be exposed to moisture, that it will not be exposed to oxygen. And you said repeatedly that, you know, the copper rusted inside you. Copper doesn't rust. It corrodes, it oxidizes. I recommend you go to a, a, a professional health person and get that, get that on, a, on a historical record for being the first person to gain copper toxicity from a copper IUD because there's nothing medically about that. Furthermore, Joy, if you truly have had copper toxicity, Where's your copper rings in your eyes? That's, that's, a, that's a big, uh, big giveaway if you have copper rings in your eyes. Uh, my other question is, is if you truly have copper toxicity, please show the medical documents. He begs Joy to prove him wrong in his questioning of her. I hope for the, I hope I am wrong, honestly. Joy, prove me wrong. The video went over Joy's past in the angelic movement, but Daniel, aka Revzion, really just wanted Joy to clear everything up and actually give a solid, straight story for once. Will she do that? Well, let's continue. This was definitely the beginning of the end, though Joy would pretend this video didn't cause any harm to her public persona. Joy immediately started losing subs, and also immediately tweeted about the video, writing, Watching the video? That's it? At Mr. Repsion, you just regurgitated info I've already talked about, and log how debunked? You're welcome for the views, smiley face. Joy will say things are debunked, but never provides the evidence. And when she does provide any evidence, it never means what Joy thinks it means. Note, for example, the evidence she used about Based Mama and Chambers having a harassment campaign really just showed that Based Mama and Chambers just didn't like her and thought she was causing harm and discussed it privately before publicly criticizing her. Joy then decided to go over Repsion's video on live. She went live, despite her before saying she was going to ignore Repsion's video. After the live stream, Joy tweeted out an updated response, saying she's not going to give a response at this time. LOL. Joy continued to say Repsion lied on Twitter, and then tweeted that she was editing her response to Repsion. It's just, she's so compulsive. First she's not gonna respond, then she is gonna respond, and she's not gonna respond, now she's editing a video. Joy then went live on the 24th, and one of her associates, Jacqueline Glenn, came on to ask Joy about getting paid to talk to angels. Joy basically wouldn't answer and told Jacqueline she was asking the wrong questions. Jacqueline was pretty much done with Joy at this point, because a lot of Jacqueline's channel is about questioning stupid religious beliefs. Jacqueline would eventually make a response about the talk between her and Joy, and it was obvious that she was annoyed. I want to mention this, I did hear that Joy, after my time talking to her on my broadcast, she did say that I was asking all the wrong questions, which is 
interesting because like my only question of concern, you'll see this after you watch the broadcast, my only question that I cared about was, are you a charlatan? Were you at some point lying about abilities that you possessed in order to profit? That's all I wanted to know. Uh, because it either means, you know, maybe you're not a skeptic, that's fine, but if you're conning people, that's problematic, but I don't think that's what she was doing. So, so Jacqueline, I'll give you a little overview if you don't know. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Um, okay. From uh, For a long time, and I still do to an extent, I had a lot of weird ass new age beliefs. I still do to an extent, but I, I view it differently. It's weird. I think I, I waste- Beliefs up change. Right, right. And I, but the other thing is back then I didn't really know how to critically think. That was something that kind of came later. So as much as I can sit here and say, oh yeah, I believe in like, I can sit here and tell people I, I think people can talk to the dead if they want to. And you I'm critically saying, think now, now differently, like now you're, now you consider yourself a critical thinker. I, I'm more so. Yeah. So I can, okay. I can still have certain beliefs, but the thing is I can now back then I was more resolute. If I had a belief, I would think it's fact for myself. Does that make sense? And now I'm more open where it's like, okay, I, you know, I, I maybe had some odd spiritual experiences or I've had, or I have some odd thoughts. Do I think this is what absolutely is? Nope. <laughs> that's, that's Do more you think so you're a psychic? Um, this is where it gets odd. I think everybody's intuitive to a degree. Everybody. Then I have a, a different view where I think, see, and, I, and forgive me, I, I'm choosing my words carefully because I know the term psychic has a lot of different connotation with it that I don't agree with. Um, that's why I more use the word intuitive. Um, there was a time, which I am I look at differently now, where I was very much into like alternative medicine. And I still think- Do like, you know what they call alternative medicine that works? What's that? Medicine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of people are, are into that kind of stuff and that's great. But like the, the one thing, and I don't know if I got a solid answer on this. Sorry. Did you, did people Oh my come God. to you for help. I didn't answer your question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, it's been That's a long okay. Day. I'm sorry. Yes. That was all good. Okay. And that, that gets, okay, that, it all ties in. Thank you for, for bringing it back. Forgive me. It's a long day. Two hours later. Oh, yeah, sorry. Did, did people, no, did people fine. come to you? So what, okay. For so services. I'll, I'll get into that. So where that part is. I wrote two articles back then. I cringe a lot of what I wrote because I'm like, oh my God. Like I was just in a, a very, very different place, very different mindset. At the end of it, it was, I think there was something about like, if you would like, like a reading or something, something, something contact me. Two people contacted me. There's one that I remember for certain. And then some asked, like basically we had a phone call and I talked to him and I was like, you know what? I don't feel comfortable charging. Like back then basically with that. So you never charged anybody for, for any of these services. No one paid you Not anything. for that. However, okay. there was one thing I did. It was in okay. 2000 and eight maybe i answered mm -hmm. right, this was the totally separate reason because it's an annual party and i was like okay. okay and it was supposed to be for fun and entertainment i did it and i left going i don't ever want to do that again so i did it yes, one I, time I, but it was okay. like i had a lot of supernatural the time and like the articles mm -hmm. do i think it's 100 percent real fuck i don't know like i can't sit here and tell you this i can't, okay. I, can't I could never joy then went live again at 2 a.m on the 25th after this live stream the walls were closing in on joy she kept saying that she was done though and youtube and other content creators are the toxic ones after jacqueline was done with joy her longtime friend neg and followed her on Twitter. After this, Moral Virus started dropping Skype calls with Joy, though they are currently unavailable. Public favor really was turning on Joy, and like every other person who's messed up on the internet, Joy decided that instead of owning up, she was going to play the victim. Joy started stating that lolcow and trolls were trying to get her roommate fired. I didn't see evidence of this anywhere, not on Twitter, not on Kiwi Farms, and not on lolcow. On the 30th, Joy started uploading a bunch of her streams to her third channel, Joy Sparkle Effort, and after after that, she began to hint she was making a video on Based Mama. This time, she hinted it'd be about the Daddy of Five situation, and she'd be dropping hot receipts to ruin Based Mama. Nobody cared. Joy was being called out left and right. Everyone was tired of her shtick, and all it took was Repsion putting everything together in a 45 minute video to let the remaining sheep know. Peter Mon twisted in the knife by uploading a video of his own, commenting on the Repsion video, and cementing himself as a major villain in Joy Sparkle's head. She believes her own Joy Sparkle's bullshit, right? She is unteachable. She ha hates every doctor in the world. There's not a doctor that she trusts out there. None of them, okay? She has huge issues with trusting doctors. I've never once in any video, and I've watched a lot of her videos now, ever heard her say, I went to this doctor, he was so amazing. I totally trust him. I'm gonna follow the regimen that he has given me and I'm gonna see if it really works. I've never, ever heard her say that. Joy was so off her rocker that people on Twitter were actually showing more support to the Daddy of Five guy, Mike Martin, who had been going back and forth with Joy since Repsion fired his initial blow. She really done goofed. 
On the 31st, she made a video called Based Mama Threatened Me and improperly tagged the video again. Emails between YouTuber Sinatra Says and Rose Hall were later leaked via Joy that occurred on August 31st, where Rose again says she doesn't want to be involved in Joy's drama. She emphasized that Joy did help her, but yeah, she wanted to focus on getting her kids. So we are in September 2017. Joy started the month by posting more videos on the Daddy of Five situation. She made the claim on the 2nd of September that Nick Monroe had created a harassment campaign to ruin her life. She also at some point made the claim that Nick Monroe is extorting the lawyer, Tim Conlon. And amidst all of this drama, Joy started claiming that her haters got one of her fans and followers, Alex, fired. But Joy kept manically posting videos around this time. She never changes. And due to her being shown to be quite a manipulative person, she dropped down to 58 thousand subscribers. And Joy started saying that she didn't want to take the Daddy of Five videos down, but added if Rose asked for them to be taken down, she would. And around this time, Rose finally publicly, on her own platform, responded. She made a small short video asking to be left out of all of this stuff. Because again, this situation was supposed to be about getting Rose's kids back, but it became the Joy Sparkle BS versus everyone show. I've been watching the recent drama on YouTube, on You Now. Um, I've seen the stuff on Twitter. Um, I do not want to be drugged into it. I am worrying about me and my kids right now on getting us back home to where we belong. Please leave me out of the drama. Um, I don't want to be drugged in it. Don't put videos out there saying people harass me or not harass me. If you think somebody's harassing me, just ask me. I'll tell you the truth. I mean, I do not want to be drugged into it. Just please leave me out of it. Thank you. After this, Joy and Rose talked for the last time, which Joy recorded and posted the recording of the phone call to a Google Drive to expose the desperate mother. Rose wanted the videos down, according to Joy, but also according to Joy, Rose said to do whatever Tim Conlon said. There was so many contradictions, and Joy's manicness just kept making her look worse. And then, Joy completely turned on Rose. Joy went on a stream on the 4th, titled, Some Decisions Being Made, where she, according according to Lawcow, made the claim that she was risking her own life to help the Daddy of Five situation. It's the Joy Show. Other claims Joy had around this time included Nick Monroe was threatening her, though I have not seen evidence of that. That Tim Conlon told her that the more views she gets on YouTube, the more likely a judge will take it seriously, though I have not seen evidence of this. She also started threatening to release private conversations between her and Rose, which she did eventually do in 2018. She said in this stream that she apparently also privated all her Daddy of Five videos. She said that she never monetized anything, though I have seen evidence to counter this claim. She claimed that Daddy of Five ruined her life. She said that she has contacted the police about death threats she was getting, and she was definitely going against Rose in this live stream. After turning on Rose for about two days, the two days being the 4th and the 5th of September, Joy went silent for 12 hours on Twitter. This was strange for her. She was addicted to giving constant updates on all social media. On the 7th, she apparently tweeted that she was now too under pressure to put out anything. Meanwhile, her social blade was showing she was down 4 million views, probably from privating her Daddy of Five videos. I really find this situation strange. I don't think there's a problem with reporting on serious and harmful situations. Many people reported on Daddy of Five, and telling the story can teach people on what to do in situations down the line. So I think getting rid of videos on the situation is bad. Well, other videos, not Joy's videos. I meant the videos that actually gave useful information in concise ways, like Nerd City's video. But Joy really overstepped the line of excessive and turned this really disgusting situation into a way to get all eyes on her. Joy went nuts for days at everyone who ever said anything rude to her. And on the 7th of September, she put out a statement writing, I made a possible error in judgment tonight. I said that Nick Monroe gave me a strike on my channel for bullying and harassing. My understanding was for bullying slash harassing. It has 
come from that individual to be taken as a strike. But I'm hearing that may be incorrect. If I was incorrect, I apologize for my misunderstanding. At the same time I got the strike, Nick Monroe issued a privacy complaint for saying his name in my video. Seems very suspect. But if I'm wrong about the bullying slash harassing, then correlation does not necessarily equal causation. And I humbly admit it. It's difficult not to be extremely defensive at this situation, as I really just want to move on and find it an incredibly awkward move from him. That my privacy and my family's privacy mean nothing to him. But when I speak the truth, he wants to try to issue a privacy complaint. The stress of what has happened over the months has taken its toll. But regardless, I am not immune to making mistakes, owning up and correcting them. Thanks for the continued support and thank you for the forgiveness if I was wrong, which much love to everyone. And to be honest, issuing a privacy complaint is really dumb on Nick's part if that's true. The next point of interest comes on the 13th. Apparently there was news with the Daddy of Five case, but Joy responded to someone informing her about it by writing, If I say anything, everyone gets attacked. I have politely resigned from the topic. I wish everyone health and happiness in the situation. After this, Joy made a video about a hurricane, and nobody was here for it. The comments accused her of using more terrible events for attention. And then, internet cool guy, Mr. Mediker, took notice of Joy on September 15th, 2018, tweeting, Where did the car dealership freak out go? Wanted to laugh at that again. I, I, is she striking down copies of it? He continued in another tweet, <laughs> your face when the angels can live in your mind tell you to do your 400th video on Onision. And someone gave Medica the link to the meltdown at the Ford dealership, to which he responded. <laughs> I love everything about this video. <laughs> Who the f live streams a tantrum at the dealership. It talks about how big their audience is. <laughs> <laughs> then someone asked, Internet Insanity Candidate? To which Medica responded, Potentially. The Medica Internet Insanity never came, but he did feature joy in his video about Rick and Morty. I'm talking about entertainment hipsters, the sorts of people that drive their cringe caravan from show to show to show, buying up merchandise and regurgitating memes at an obnoxious rate. By the way, Pickle Rick. I just want to say Pickle Rick. I'm not Pickle Rick. I see Pickle Rick! Pickle Rick! Pickle Rick! After becoming a mockery, Joy went mostly silent. She tweeted on the 17th that she was still too sick to do anything. And then Worski and Tommy C went live and, according to LawCal reports, tore Joy apart. Sadly, no copy is still available, from what I can find. Joy was slowing down because of everything. On the 27th of September, she deleted her Twitter, and on the 28th, it was noted that she was deleting more videos. She did turn her Twitter back on on the 28th as well, making her break from Twitter one whole day. Like all of her other breaks, this was short-lived and erratic. On September 30th, Joy kept going after Repsion, tweeting out a large text post telling Repsion to apologize because Nick Monroe is bad. Joy claimed to be vindicated by saying Rose and Tim talked to her, but it wasn't enough. I don't think Joy's reasoning of, I talked to Tim and Rose, was really an excuse to post 300 videos in a short period of time with little to no new information. Joy kept fighting on Twitter all day on the 30th of September. Public favor was not on her side. Repsion finally responded to her constant adding him and wrote, Are you mentally retarded? I asked to see evidence in my f***ing video. Show those copper toxicity levels and prove me wrong. He wrote again. Yeah, good morals to lie about getting copper toxicity from an IUD. That was a f***ing joke. And then he responded to one of her tweets, writing, Keep living your victim narrative, eating pizza, streaming, fighting your chronic diarrhea, and false claims about copper toxicity. And September ends, and we go into the final month of Joy's stay on YouTube. On October 1st, the streamer and co-host of the Kumite, Failure, made a tweet saying he would apologize to Joy, but apparently his tweet was a joke making fun of her. Meanwhile, on the 2nd, Joy decided the best way to combat all her criticism about exploiting serious situations was to make a video on a mass shooting. This, of course, did not go over well. People knew what Joy was doing and they were done with her. Then she uploaded a video called, I've been demonetized. And people on lolcow.farm used video analytic add-ons to see that Joy was running ads on it and see her estimated earnings on the video claiming she had no ads. Repsion went absolutely savage on Joy at this point. He called her a lying c**t, 
on the 2nd of October for lying about having ads. And after Joy announced she was getting a puppy, he responded to the announcement by writing, Hopefully she doesn't give her doggo herpes. Joy just kept spamming videos after this. And on the 4th of October, she did a live stream with Failure. I really wanted to find a copy of the stream, but I couldn't. Mike and actor and Joy decided to start a fake drama with each other. Mike and actor posted a weird video about Joy, and then the video got taken down, and they all pretended that Joy flagged it. It was weird. Joy went live about this whole drama with Mike and actor, but if I can recall the situation, it was all very fake. It was all a kind of big, lame joke they thought was funny, but it was just kind of eh. Then on the 4th, Joy allegedly uploaded a video called Why I Haven't Sued. According to Lawcow, it was Joy's typical boo-hoo, the IUD ruined my life, Joy narrative. And on October 5th, Joy dropped to 57,000 subs. Also on the 5th, Joy uploaded a video called My Biggest Regret, where she claimed her biggest regret was not saying that black people came from poo, not spamming a ridiculous amount of videos, but her biggest regret was trying to use YouTube to make friends. My biggest regret, and this it's a two-parter, but they go together, is that I came onto YouTube with the intention to make friends. I think that was the biggest regret. And what goes along with that regret in the friendship realm is trusting the wrong people. Then, same day as this, she went on You Now again to talk about Rose. Then on the 6th, Joy tweeted, Big announcement today! Live stream tonight at 7 p.m. Central. One of the biggest rumors is gonna be revealed. Time to take out the trash. After this, she first posted a video on Nick Monroe, saying he filed a privacy complaint on her videos, with no evidence from what I can tell. And then hints that that night on a YouTube live stream, she was going to drop a truth bomb. Before the truth bomb could come out, Peter Mon made a video on Joy's video about her greatest regret on the 6th. Joy responded to this video by saying Peter got a lot wrong and he could reach out to her. To my knowledge, Peter never reached out to her to confirm information. Also to my knowledge, Joy never said what information was wrong. Joy will say information is wrong and then never really post any proof and then claim she was vindicated. Homegirl is nuts. Joy's truth bomb stream never came. And on the 7th of October, Joy just deletes her channel. She then went live on You Now to talk about deleting her YouTube, where she cried over how the level of harassment was too much and how the skeptics didn't stand up for her. And after that, Joy just kind of disappeared from the public eye. Most people following her didn't really keep up with her much after she deleted her channel. To a lot of people, she just disappeared from the internet. This, I feel like, is a great conclusion to the first year into Joy Sparkle BS's story. In fact, this first year could be a standalone story of a rise and fall. And if I make more to the series, the rest of it is kind of like unexpected sequels. But within less than one year of gaining notoriety and fame, Joy became a subject of controversy and ended up mostly disappearing after that short period of time. A lot of rise and fall stories of internet individuals take longer than about 10 months to have this sort of beginning, middle, and end. But Joy managed that in a very short time. The story of Joy is old in terms of internet history. This happened around four years ago of me recording this. But Joy always had sort of a fond place in my heart. Joy was one of the first e-celebs that I actually genuinely liked. She sort of introduced me to the YouTube scene of following trash fires. And once I looked more into this person that I was a fan of, I realized that she was not someone I personally would trust. And that, that might be one of the biggest takeaways from the story that has caused me to be wary about online interactions and online personalities to this day. Watching Joy Sparkle BS's downfall in 2017 can teach a lot of lessons. But the biggest lesson to learn here is to just not live online 24 seven. Don't live in the public eye. Even if some of the allegations against her during this time were unwarranted, her constant spamming of information nonstop made her someone many people began to question. Sometimes it's best to just log off for a bit and step away. But Joy couldn't do that until her reputation was damaged to such an extent that she deleted her whole channel. But yeah, that's the main arc in the Joy Sparkle BS saga. I may go further in abridging the rest of the series for you listeners, but that might take some time. And if you want to hear the rest of her saga and how, oh my god, like one time, oh she's, oh my god. If you want... <laughs> She like stole a whole YouTube channel from somebody. It's so funny. Um, just uh, leave a comment with a dolphin. Anyways, back to the series conclusion. I want to thank the people who did voices for this series. Irate Alex, Justin Wang, Turk February, Toad McKinley, Negs, and Kill All Pedos, who deepfaked the voice of Medicare. I'd like to give a shout out to Cecil McFly. Remember to subscribe to his 
fucking YouTube channel. You fucking Subscribe to all of them. They rock. And I'd like to thank my patrons and my channel members listed here. If you like extensive lore on internet eccentricities and want to support the channel, please consider becoming a channel member or a patron. Like all of these guys rock. And even if you can't become one, please just consider subscribing. And I'd especially like to thank my $20 and over patrons. $20 and over patrons get special artwork done right here by me. Graphic design is my passion. I want to continue this story because I really do enjoy the next arc of the Joy Sparkle BS series. But I might do something in between the parts. I want to explore someone else in between. So yeah, if you want to learn more about Joy, Onision, and whoever else I believe deserves a chapter in the internet lore I speak of on this channel, please subscribe. Anyways, till then, suffer lightly. Bye.